Let's talk. Um, okay, I told you Cheryl Lee Ralph is coming. Okay, great. And advice hours next hour. The phone lines are open. Is the fax machine working? The fax machine. Nobody hears you. Fifty-one ninety-four. Okay, so the fax machine. Okay, temporary number. And I'll give it to you in a few moments. Uh, this music bed is about to end, and I'm about to be cut off. So it is what it is. All day, every day. <laughs> Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, Dibs, Ja Rule. Yo, what up, what up, y'all? This Lil' C's. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Y Clef Jean, a.k.a. The Preacher's Son, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Hey. So ask yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Mmm. Mmm. Guess who I just found out is coming to Don's and Diva's extravaganza? My friend, the porn star, Jenna Jameson. Yeah. Yes. I love Jenna and I love her husband, Jay. And so you remember, you know, for my VH1 series of specials. Hey, everybody over at VH1. How you doing? All right. People are waiting for the for the rest of the story. Everybody, we're still in cahoots. Um, so my husband and I and the VH1 crew, we flew out to um, Jenna and, and Jay's house in Arizona. And we had a great time. We we um, ate food and, um, and other stuff. And we had drinks. And other stuff. Hey, Jenna, do you remember? We started drinking like 8 o'clock in the morning. By the time we got out to you and Jay's boat on the lake, forget about it. We were absolutely T to the R, yet trashed. It was like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We're riding around with the, you know. And then you, your, your mind starts to get all akimbo when you, because that was my first time meeting Jenna. Plus, it was early in the morning. As soon as we walk in the house, Jenna's got apple martinis all mixed on the granite counters in her kitchen. So immediately we start having the drinks and it's already early. So I'm a little bit blurry. Within a few moments of having like the first drink, she she says, let me take you around the house. And she's, you know, giving me a full tour of the house, everything, her shoe closet, her laundry room. By the way, Jenna, I just got the same washer and dryers that you have. Yeah, at, at Carl's Appliances on Bloomfield Avenue, they have the same ones. So um, then we're out at the pool and we're still having our drinks. And I'm a little foggy because I'm like, I could. The first thing that struck me as odd it was when we pulled up to Jenna's house. The house is no more than like 25 feet from the sidewalk. Now, you know, Jenna, there's no gates, it's not a gated community. Or anything. And, if, and not only that, you can just walk right up to the house and ding dong. I'm like, you know, how do you do, Jenna? And I'm asking her all these questions about security first because you know me, paranoid. But, you know, Jenna, I mean, you know, you would think that she'd be guarded and all like that. And, you know, out in the pool area where she, you know, lays and naked and sunbathing and people just, the crazies, just the availability, you know, to the crazies. Her house was, you know, a beautiful place, though. And, you know. Then she came to New York and she promoted her new book. Remember, she came a few months ago, about a year ago, I guess. And she invited me to um, the book party. You know, she attracts quite the wild crowd, Jenna Jameson. And as you can imagine, then she's got that big, big to do in Times Square. You know, she's the most successful porn star of all time. And might I add... For the money that that woman is pulling down, and Jenna's pulling down some bucks, she owns all her own mess. She's done it like no other porn star. I can't even explain it to you because I'm not really that familiar with myself. But when you think money and porn stars, please don't think, you know, Tracy Lords and, you know, some of these other, uh, you know, broke hoes. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's Jenna. Jenna. My friend Jenna Jameson. Mr. Marcus and Jenna Jameson in the same party. <laughs> what the hell? And five hours of open bar. Five hours open bar. That's why the subtitle of the party is Wendy's Fun House. The Dons and Divas Extravaganza, Wendy's Fun House. Yeah. So I'm happy about that. 
I've got um, a, a, actually. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna wrap this up in 30 seconds because I feel I always feel dopey if I talk about the party and then I don't tell you guys how to get tickets. Real quick, go to PayPal.com if you've got a PayPal account. Pick up your passes for December 22nd. Secret location in New York City, New York. The big Dons and Divas extravaganza. Yep, it's the Black Party. Martel XO Demetrio Furs. That's my furrier. Uh, present the Wendy Williams Dons and Divas extravaganza. It's the Black Party. Everybody's going to be dressed all in black. Plenty of everybody. Black, white, you know, younger, you know, young at heart. Older, but young at heart. Gay, straight, lesbian, you know, trice, what, you know. And so you can go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com for more information. Or you can um, go to the official website for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Uh, excuse me, the email address. Because you email how many tickets you want and, and all like that. Uh, we're doing a lot of giveaways on the radio. And throughout, like tonight I'm going to the Laugh Factory. The Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. No doubt the promoter will, you know, shove a few tickets down my, you know, cleavage and say, you know, give these away, baby. <laughs> We've got that kind of relationship. <laughs> but you can always go to um, Dons and Divas. You spell out and. 2005 at yahoo.com. Make an email with your telephone and email address and stuff. And somebody will get back to you and let you know about the tickets and whatnot. It's just it's going to be a great party. Hey, Mary J. Blige. She's our host. And yes. Keisha Coles. Shout out to the, to the, to the evil one, the hater. Heard you talking about the party today. You know, I got you and I got white trash. And I got your new gay friend also. What's his name? Chris. Gay Chris. Chris the queer. Yeah, I think Buck Wild is too yeah. young. But, uh, you know, certainly. It's going to be unity with me and my radio brethren. Angie Martinez, I got you and your whole crew. Get a babysitter that night, mama. Funkmaster Flex, boy. I know you'll be in the building. Just because we're cool like that, Flex. Give him one of his own bombs. <laughs> I stole it from him. I give it back at 7 o'clock. No, I gave that to him anyway. So it was actually... It was it is to mine to begin with now. Yeah. Shout out to Ed Lover. He can't hear my shout out. He's on at the same time. We put aside this little radio, um, you know, with the man tries to make us do war with each other all day long. You know what I mean? They try to make us war with each other from one station to the other. I don't fall for that mess. As far as I'm concerned, I'm the United Nations of radio. You know, you all can fight with each other, and it's funny as hell. My girl Jones goes at it with some... What? <laughs> we put all that mess aside. Come on now. I love you all. Like cooked food, fat man scoop. I know, you know, nothing but a thing. I'll see you up in there. Cater by Shawnee, fat man scoop. <laughs> I mean, in case you're interested. <laughs> Who else? Ed and Dre aren't together anymore. That's okay. Dre, you're invited too. Because there was a time me, you, and Funkmaster Flex and Angie Martinez were on in things in this city. Right? Yep, yeah, of course. I talked to my man, Steve Harvey. He's going to be there. I was just talking to Steve earlier today. Oh, Vaughnie Harper, the legend. He'll be up in there. I would invite you, Carol Ford. You know you're invited, but as I can recall, you never go out to parties. That's my girl, Carol Ford. Scott and Todd. Todd, we live in the same neighborhood. I'll be putting your uh, invite <laughs> in your mailbox. Golden Girl in Philly, my Philly faction. Colby Cole. It's not going to get any better for you. Power 99 is killing the city. But what I'm saying is is that you and that, that band of losers over there at your radio station. No, I'm just playing. I'm just, they're losing in the ratings, but this is not about ratings. In Philadelphia, we is killing them. Power 99. No, but you know what? All you all are invited. Let me make sure everybody gets tickets. Shout out to my radio brethren all, over the, all across the world. <clears throat> you know, you work with so many people in the beginning of your career. You buy into all the hate. Yeah, I can't stand so-and-so. They work across town at the competition. You know what I'm saying? The bosses at your radio station, they practically feed you raw meat. They want you to be vicious on the attack. You know, 
not stepping inside other people's parties and, you know, getting on the radio and spewing venom and hate until you grow up a bit and you realize, you know what? This is a small business. Today's jock that you're spewing venom and hate because the man wants you to do it is the same one who's who you're cross talking, you know, with next. Angie's up next. Why am I hating? Why am I wasting my time? And then the older you get, the more problems you got going on. You know, the older in the game. You know, the more problems you got going on, the last problem you need is to think about, you know, the man trying to tell you to hate. I'm not hating. Who's your favorite DJ? They're going to be at my party. <laughs> your favorite radio DJ. I love them all. Shout out to Baltazar, 92 KTU. Hey, boy. Hey. You and your partner. I'm sending you all some passes. Partner in the morning. Oh, Were you wondering? I was, I was what, say. No, Baltazar's married. <laughs> I think he's still married. <laughs> Balti, are you still married? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't buy much into it. You know, I just can't be bothered. Listen, I wanted to tell you, um, have you ever heard of the Mile High Kit? No? You have? We can talk about that, too. Okay. Keep it where you got it. We're just getting started. It's Wendy, man. Michelle? Yeah. You're just having casual sex with him. Right. There is no engagement. No. He's got a girlfriend. So call. I'm pregnant now. Did I keep it? Wait, hold on for just one moment. I'm about to reach through the phone and crack her skull. <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, Thank you. Oh, my God. It ain't over yet. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. Let me know what the winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win tomorrow morning beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. <laughs> there will never be another. Yes, it's the Wendy Williams experience. You know, I was just sitting here looking through my new Jolie magazine. Have you picked up this magazine yet? This is Vivica Fox's magazine. Remember, we interviewed with her and she talked about um, how this is her, her latest venture. And I, I, you know, I love her for, you know, branching out and doing so many different things. Um, this Jolie magazine, the second issue is actually on newsstands now. And um, I was reading, oh, getting ready to read the article about uh, what's your sexual color. Apparently, you know, when you have the big O, there's a color that you see. Uh, and whatever that color is, uh, kind of like your horoscope. Like, what's your sexual color? So you can read about that in the new Jolie magazine. Sierra is beautiful on the front cover. She's got pictures inside. <sighs> Vivica is giving us holiday tips on getting red carpet ready, which is perfect. You know, when you walk into a place, you know, you want to be ready and on, on point. I love uh, Jolie magazine, though. I really do. Um, you might have been looking around for it and you can't uh, find it. I know you can get it at Barnes & Noble. That's where I got mine. Um... You can get it at B. Dalton Bookstore. And to find out more information about Jolie Magazine, J-O-L-I-E, um, it's a magazine for women of color, but white girls, you can read it too. We read your magazines. You know, Cosmo and... You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> we take from it what we need and we leave the rest, you know, over there. When they show makeup and the darkest it goes is, you know... Pam Anderson on a tan day. You know, we understand when you describe things in the articles and the white girl magazines and her skin is always peachy, peaches and cream, you know, or por like porcelain. Well, that's why we have magazines like Jolie. But you can read our magazine, too. We read yours, like I was saying. We are the world children. Go to fabulushlife.com. Fabulushlife.com. And find out more about Jolie magazine. I can't wait to talk with you about AJ Calloway. I'm not going to do it now, though. Everybody else is not listening. Can we screen some phone calls? Yes. Samantha, are we screening phone calls? People are... Yeah. Dominique is in there now? Okay. Great. Oh, by the way, the fax machine is... Um, we, got a, we got a replacement fax machine. 
As far as I'm concerned, it looks oh, yeah. brand new right off the assembly line. I mean, it, you know, it's Anthony's from his office. He took it out and put it in here. So it's used. But to this situation, it's brand new. 866-WENDY-FAX. The fax machine is popping. That's a big news. Something yeah. Something. Yeah. <laughs> This person says, is there food, any food at Don's and Divas or just drinks? Now, what do you think? <laughs> just drinks. I know. <laughs> um, if you do have food, is the food going to be free? Five hours open. No, the food is uh, free. It, actually, there's food in VIP. Um, did I tell you that this place hold three, holds holds uh, 2,500 people? Okay, so it's going to be a big extravaganza. The food is free in VIP, catered by our girl, Shawnee Caterer who's catered for all kinds of fabulous people, including um, affairs with Hillary Clinton and um, Spike Lee and his wife and so on and so forth. You can always find out more about Shawnee by going to Cater by Shawnee, S-H-A-W-N-E-E dot com. Cater by Shawnee dot com. Uh, yes, there is going to be food. She's doing all kinds of finger food, you know. Let's go to line number... Three. Roy is 45 and hooked up with another caller. From this show, Roy? Yes. I, what are you doing? Uh, no, how are you doing? I'm wonderfully blessed now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, last Monday I was listening to your program. Mm -hmm. And there's a young lady that called and said, she, she can't meet a straight guy, you know? She can't meet so, a straight guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she called last Monday evening. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was wondering if we could, you know, meet up with the lady. I'll give him, give him my information and take it off. Goose, can you translate? <laughs> huh? Uh, hold on. Goose is going to translate Yardy. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. okay. The girl I called the last time. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's looking for a street, man. Uh-huh. Oh boy thinks he can fill his shoes. Oh, okay. You want the girl number? Uh, Roy. So you can reach out. Hello. Yeah, Roy. I don't know any more about her than I know about you, but I thank you for calling and listening. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Let's bye. go. Let's go to line number one. Um, I can't read your name, but I see you're 37. What's your name? Uh, Gerard. Hi, Gerard. How hey. are you? All right. Hey, Wendy. Uh, listen, I just wanted to uh, tell you happy wedding anniversary. Because uh, you, you just said it was your anniversary on you're, Wednesday. You remembered? Yeah. And I want to say I love your show. Thank and you. And I also wanted to say, is there a reason why you never mentioned um, about your um, uh, TV commercial? What TV commercial? You're on on um, on FIT TV channel two thirty three on the fit on the uh, fit network. It got you story um, of my life all the way up there on channel two thirty three. Yeah, on Direct TV. <laughs> it has you. It has you um, jumping down on this jumping. <laughs> um, on a trampoline. What? And, and you keep saying, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, that was when I was on Good Day New York. Well, it's on a commercial on FIT TV. Is it for Good Day New York or is it a commercial somebody used their footage for something else? It's it well it comes it's a, like it comes in between um different segments of this exercise program with uh that black Thai bow guy. Billy Blanks? Yeah. And it comes during the commercial time, and it shows you in a in a a, a skirt, yes, and a, a top, and you're jumping up and down, and it says, and it keeps repeating you saying, "How you doing? How you doing? How you doing?" And it says, even Wendy Williams does it. Even Wendy Williams does it. Does what? Tybo? No, that jumping thing. Wait, but who's saying even Wendy? Is that damn Billy Blanks? No, it's a commercial that comes on. Who's on, making the money from the commercial? It, it belongs to uh, Bally's commercial. Okay, now we're at the bottom of things. Yeah, it's a Bally's commercial, and you're you're standing on a I forgot what is it? It's like a a baby trampoline. Somebody call Ray Hamlin, my attorney. Okay, and you're you're jumping up and down. Get saying, my husband, who's my manager. Well, oh. you, you keep saying, and I was wondering why... Dion Levingston, who's my GM. Dion, I'll give you a cut if you help me get to the bottom of this. You've got such a nice way about business, Dion. Okay. Help! It's uh, FITTV. Mm -hmm. Channel 233 on Direct TV. 233 on Direct TV. And uh, this is this is a commercial about Bally's. 
Yeah, and it, and you're jumping. It's it's a commercial for that. A that, trampoline, apparently. Yeah, and you're jumping up and down. But the thing is, it looks like your voice is being. No, and that is me saying it. I jumped up and down on Good Day New York, you know, me and my clownery. And I said, how you doing? How you doing? You guys, you remember watching me and seeing me on there jumping in a skirt. But the thing is, it, it, it doesn't say just one or two times. It just keeps saying, how you doing? How you doing? How I kept you doing? saying it. I was at a loss for words, so I just went for the funny. <laughs> You know I'm like the, the black Lucy Ricardo. So I was wondering why you never mentioned that. Because I didn't know. And Bally's, this is about a Bally's trampoline? Yeah, it's a Bally's, it's a Bally's they commercial. They thought they could bury it end. in the cut. I'm endorsing Bally's. Do you it's, hear what this? How long has this been running on uh, DirecTV? Um, at night, it comes on at night time. The times that I've watched it is from 10.30 to 12 I watch it because there's a back-to-back uh, fitness programs that I usually follow and do on, t- you know, while okay, I'm watching so TV. these are during infomercials. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're jumping up and then I found it weird that while well, she's in a skirt jumping up and down. Because uh, because they took the excerpts and they're trying to make me endorse them. Uh, look, I want to, what's your name again? Gerard. Gerard. G E R A R D. Uh, Gerard, I want to thank you for the information. Now let me see if I have my facts correct. Okay. An infomercial sometime between ten thirty PM and twelve thirty PM. Yeah, on on F I T T V On F I T T V Channel two, Channel two thirty three. On it's direct T V. I don't know what channel F I T T V comes on cable, but it's it, Direct TV 233. Okay. We're going to get to the bottom of this immediately. Oh, no. We don't need a telephone number because when I get my uh, windfall, he's going to want to cut. <laughs> okay. No. Mm-mm. Everybody's my witness who's listening. <laughs> so I was wondering why you never you never told us. Because I didn't know about it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no. Be happy. Okay. All right. Well, I'll be listening to find out what goes on with that. Okay. Well, thank you, Gerard. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How you doing? How you doing? I'm t- I'm 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 calling the cops. Wow. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Jumping up and down, talking about how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> you know what it was on good day? They had some fitness people come in, and we they had a, the trampolines lined up outside on the sidewalk. So this is when Jody Applegate was off. So me and Chris Galis, you know, and he he could be goofy too, and I mean that in a good way. So we're outside. He's in his you know big man suit because he's like six feet six. He's in his big man suit, and I'm in my you know big clothes, uh, but a skirt. And we're outside working out with the, the, the fitness people. But the main fitness guy was, in my opinion. Yeah. Ow. Exactly. <laughs> and so when we had to jump up on the trampoline, I just, you know, <laughs> and I pushed my butt out and everything. How you doing? 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 <laughs> wow. All right. Um. Let me talk about Benjamin Rugg and Home um, Home Imports. They're located at 20 Meadowlands Parkway in Secaucus, New Jersey. They're fabulous. They um, they completed a guest room project at our house, and then they've completed several offices here at WBLS, including my office, um, which looks spectacular. Um, I like the I like the um, contemporary furniture. You might like something a little bit more traditional for your uh, for your house or, or whatever, and or or you might like classic furniture. They've got it, and they've got a fabulous collection of sumptuous, toe tickling rugs, rich colors, deep piles, shallow pile. What what is your pleasure? Check them out. Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. They're open Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. They're in Secaucus, New Jersey. And their web address is actually the name of the wife, the husband and wife team that own uh, ben, um, Stephanie Cohen and her fabulous husband, Benny. They own it. Go to stephaniecohen.com. Take a look at what they have. Wholesale prices, retail location. 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Wholesale prices for the good stuff. Plus, they've got fabulous tchotchkes. And they've got an interior design um, service. Like in the office, they did the furniture and the rugs, you know. But they also gave us the tchotchkes. They did the, the end tables and the coffee tables a spectacular silver when you finally say one day we'll have cameras in there and then it'll be on TV you'll be able to say fabulous silver um, fabulous silver desk lamps t- uh, floor lamps um, pictures rugs uh, you know uh, the mirrors the oak the silk just beautiful beautiful stuff beautiful 
I'm not just talking to you about it. I'm actually a customer myself. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Go to stephaniecohen.com and find out more about Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, 20 Meadowlands Parkway in fabulous Secaucus, New Jersey. And this part of the Wendy Williams experience, this portion, is being brought to you by MasterCard. When you carry MasterCard, you carry clout. We need to continue with the commercials. I'm going back to um, call the cops. How you doing? And Ray Hamlin, attorney. How you doing? 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 Yo, be original. Your shit is sloppy. Get off your shit. You motherfucking copy. It's Wendy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. So, it really pains me regarding um, AJ Calloway. You know... He's got a really nice, charismatic personality. He's got one of those personalities. Um, and you can see glimpses of it, yeah, on the old 106 in Park. But in person, and I know, I only know AJ in like a schmoozy kind of way, you know, um, like that. But I, the glimpses that I've caught of AJ, he's got one of those kind of personalities that gets along with everybody in the room. You know, regardless of your background. Um, whether it's, you know, uh, financially. No, I think he only does prefer rich people and people who can get him some money, though. Yeah, that is one thing. I don't know that he gets along with poor people. But what he does get along with is everybody from black to white to gay to straight, you know, men, women, and all like that. And I thought that he was the perfect splaboo to be in line for. Why not? They're giving everybody else shows. Why not? You know and I know it takes a whole lot more than talent. Talent is only about a 10%. And I'm not saying he's not talented. All I'm saying is that that's only about 10% of the situation. The other part of it is your ability to schmooze and get in with the right people. And AJ, that's a behind kissing mother father. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way. You know what I, 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 I get? Yeah, uh, hello. Hello, AJ, AJ. I mean, I mean this in uh, the best possible way because it's it, you. It's people with your kind of grind who end up getting ahead. You know, it's usually people like me who are always trying to stand for some damn thing. You know, which is why you know I'm getting bootlegged on Channel Two Thirty Three in the Bronx, saying how you doing, how you doing on some damn trampoline with a skirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> AJ's sitting at the owner of Bally's. He's sitting on his yacht somewhere in the Mediterranean. You know what I'm saying? Saying all the right words. Next thing you know, AJ will be on a pump him up fitness commercial. A little skinny AJ talking about this will pump you up. And you're like, but why? It's because <laughs> AJ knows the art of the schmooze. So it really sickened me to find out his little sitcom has been dropped because AJ got diva esque on him, honey. AJ got that little um, that, that little sitcom deal and started crowing about it. Remember he called up here, AJ? And remember when 106 and Park was rumblings of it about to end and, you know, I tease AJ about, yeah, I heard about your little TV situation and he co-signed. Yeah, I do have that. But, you know, 106 and Park will always be near and dear to my heart. And, heart, and I'm talking about, you know, what are you going to do with um, Free? And he said, you know, Free's going to be okay. And then finally they have their last day show. He cries them little, um, you know, get in with the right people, crocodile holiday tears. And, and he, did, he even did that well because, you know, AJ is schmoozy. If you want him to cry, cry when? How many tears do you want? You know? And where will this get me? Because he's only crying if it's going to get, you know. As well he should be. You know, there's a certain amount of ambition. I mean, hell, I've known the guy to be a single. I mean, he's married now. But at one point, single man with no kids. Why not grind out? You only live for you. These are the grinding years. Married now. now he's married to the doctor. And I thought it was going to be the doctor and the sitcom star. But, honey, AJ went out there and was working on his show. And he had Kim Coles to be a part of the sitcom and everything. And you know Kim Coles? We love her. I forgot the other person he has had as a part of the sitcom. Got his little deal with Sony that they were going to put it on UPN 9. It was going to be called the AJ Calloway Show. Yes, his name and lights and everything. Wow. Barry Black is here. Wow. Hey, Barry. Wow. The AJ Calloway Show. He, um, took, he took my uh, book cover pictures for, actually, he did for the first book. Uh, Wendy, uh, Wendy brings the heat. The one where I'm sitting with the cleavage and the black normal Kamali dress and, you know, like that. This, the, my autobiography. Barry took the picture. He put his finger on, like, every single damn frame. Fortunately, <laughs> we're only looking for one picture. He's wonderful to work with. I'm incredibly comfortable, you know, in front of the camera with him. But I swear, between siphoning through, you know... Barry, that's your damn finger again! What is the matter with you? Barry's from Brooklyn. He does it because he does it, baby. He takes the pictures. 
Anyway, where was I? AJ. Okay, so... So AJ goes out there, you know, gets out there with the white people in California. He's got his own show. And I'm thinking, you know, you know AJ, you know, he's down with the Kersey Warner. Kersey, you know, you see their name at the end of everything. Knows all the right white people. Shaking hands. Cut his dreads off the whole bit. He's playing the cracker game. You know what I mean? And I mean that in the best way. He's playing that game out there in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So he's working on his sitcom, got the Kim Coles, got all the white people, you know, the Steins and the Schwartzes, you know, people who run Hollywood. The thumbs up, black dude, thumbs up. You're our next dude. And here he goes. They set the wedding date. AJ's like, well, I'm going to marry the doctor on this date. AJ, why did you plan for that particular date? We already gave you the schedule of when we're filming. It's my show. I can, you know. I'm going to get married. The show will be here when I get you. The show can't move without the star, can it? All right, then. I'll see you when I get back. Damn, nigger. You know, you know the grumblings behind his back, but they're not yet telling him. This is how I'm hearing how the story went down. If AJ would love to call and coll- collaborate with me, I would love to hear it. But the point I'm trying to make, then it, they enroll AJ in acting classes. AJ can't act a lick. What? AJ's, it, now it's the AJ Calloway show, so AJ's acting like himself, basically. They said and AJ can't act his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> well, they didn't say that. I, I'm surmising and telling you that. I'm trying to make you laugh uh, in with hearing the story that I know that I'm dragging on, but I'm giving you dramatic effect in with it. So, to make a long story short, okay... AJ's sitcom got dropped like yesterday's bad habit. Now he's unemployed, married to the doctor. And is Free still pregnant with Jay-Z's baby? Her windfall's better than yours, AJ, because with malpractice insurance, it takes doctors a while before they start making any money. So they do need a two income. I mean, I the DRP and respect to the DR period, but after researching a lot of you all, you know, you aren't the wealthy people that I always grew up thinking that you are. Oh, there's the warm line, Goose. Now, if this is AJ, then we're going to extend the break. Affiliates, we're going to extend the break. Everybody wants to know what happened to AJ. Is that AJ? No. AJ's um trying to hatch the next, the next financial plan. Married that doctor now. What you gonna do? Yeah, with all your fancy friends at the wedding. All your fancy phony friends. I wasn't invited to the wedding, AJ. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. And I'm not mad either. But man, if AJ can't smooth his way through Hollywood, <laughs> then the rest of us splaboos might as well sit on the sidelines. It's windy, man. You can go on the stand, Steve, but the point is keep your mouth shut. Anybody from the streets know that. Never talk on the street. Wendy Williams, if you don't know me, I'm not your punching bag. You gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Hey, and here we go. Okay. Welcome to Advice Hour, everybody. This is um, your chance to, well, get a second or third or fifth opinion on something that's going on in your life. Uh, You know, I try to help the best I can. Relationships and career advice, suggestions in dealing with your family. Um, I mean, you know, I'm a mother. If you're a mother, too, maybe we can talk about that, you know. Um, 866-GET-WENDY. That's my telephone number. I'll be taking your phone calls in just a moment. Uh, The fax machine is working also, everybody. Thank you. At 866-WENDY-FAX. I know, world. It's been down for 48 whole hours. But I like to start off um, Advice Hour with Wendy's Medical Minute. And I ran ran into something in the newspaper. And as a matter of fact, there's a couple of the listeners have even sent this to me. Do you know that... This is dealing with herpes as it relates to salon wax treatments, girls. Pull up, pull up. And then many of you are getting waxed also, whether it's on your back or whatever. You never heard of getting herpes other than your lips and your genitalia? Hello? You can get herpes of the skin. So everybody needs to pull close. By the way, my girls in my office, my entire office has stopped waxing. Everybody gets their eyebrows threaded. Everybody gets them threaded. And um, as far as um, getting your privates uh, done and everything, um, well, you know, every, everybody does their own thing. But but we always talk about, you know, the eyebrows and stuff. Everybody in the office gets threaded. Nobody gets waxed anymore. Because many women, as this article is saying, 
are um, going to professional waxers to get rid of unwanted hair. But they're saying that this practice could put salon customers at risk for herpes. There's a new email making its rounds warning that it could. Have you gotten the email yet? The message is citing that women um, have called a radio station. Yeah, I don't know where. And uh, one particular woman, she started this saying that she contracted the herpes virus, um, a virus that mostly is caused with painful um, oral and genital sores as, and blisters. After she had her lips and eyebrows waxed at a New York City salon. And like the bird flu, it will spread too. So you all in Colorado, stop saying, oh, it's just New York. We don't have to pay attention. Yes, you do. The um, They're saying that women... Um, <laughs> well, listen to how it goes, okay. After the blisters and a wax at a New York salon. The married woman who stated that she never cheated was wondering how she possibly got herpes, not only on her lip, but also on her eyebrows. Now, she's going into explaining that she never cheated on her husband. (laughs) Because I guess they accused her of something. (laughs) According to the email, if someone has herpes, those bacteria now uh, get on the stick, and now those bacteria fester and grow in the hot wax. Yep, because you know, heat makes everything grow. That's why, you know, as much as you complain about a hospital being cold, man, I've caught more bad colds laying on the, the hospital gurney, getting ready to go get, you know, an operation. Then, then any there's it's freezing, but if it's warm, then that festers the germs. And they never change that wax. And they never change the wax. It's the, you're right, Shaylin. It's the same nasty wax. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to pass that on to you. Uh, you might want to rethink your program or bring your own paraffin, which becomes too messy. And that is Wendy's medical minute. <laughs> I love that. I wish they could see your face. <laughs> Now, who's monitoring the phones? They're not fast enough with um, um, pressing the computer button and getting... Get, I need my computer things. Today is Sam's first day here. You having a good day, Sam? Yeah. Okay, good. A bit busy, right? Yeah, she's very busy. I think she either goes to Pace or um, Howard, one of the two. Howard. She graduated from Howard. Okay, we're ready. Line number one is a woman who wants to remain anonymous. Just got married. Oh, a man. Wife knows he's a bisexual... And now his ex-lover's back in the picture. Ew. What does he tell his ex-lover? Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Well, you tell your ex-lover that you're married. Why do you owe your ex-lover any sort of um, formality? Well, Wendy, it's because, okay, me and um, him, I actually was his first relationship, you know. Mm-hmm. And I left him. So it was like, okay, once he found out that I was married, it was just like, okay, at first he thought it was a man. And when he comes to find out that it wasn't a man, it's like all hell broke loose. And I, I feel that I owe him an explanation because of the fact that not that I took him away from whatever it was that he was doing, but at the same time, I did introduce him to a new way of life, basically. Okay. Does your wife know you're bisexual? Yes. Does she know that you have this, this lover that you were cheating on her with? No, I was not cheating on her with him. Okay, you, you were with him before. Before, yes. <clears throat> I, th- I mean, I feel as though you owe him absolutely nothing. And whatever it is you choose to do for him, in terms of an explanation, does not need to be done in, per- in, in person. Okay. You know what I mean? But I mean, he shows up, he sends things to my you job. You need he, to raise um, your voice and shut it down. Because your wife, while sure she knows you're bi... Hello? Yes. Sure your wife knows you're bisexual, but at the end of the day, this is still... And I don't care whether you're heterosexual or bisexual. This is still an Mm ex-lover coming into your life with all types of temptations and and things like that. Mm -mm. Next time he calls you, you need to tell him and raise your voice. And you need to shut down all that sending to your job and all that other kind of stuff. Do you really want to be married? You're only 24 years old. Uh, how long have you been married? I've been married now for about a year and a half. Do you like it? Yes. It's lovely. But we were, you know, we basically played the married role for about 10 years. You and your uh, now wife? Yes. Well, you're only 24. So you've been too much involvement. <laughs> too much involvement. You've been playing the married role for 10 years. She's been your beard. Yes. Because mm-hmm. really, you're, you prefer men? No. Okay. 
Just just trying to trap you. <laughs> just trying to trap you in something. No, but you know what? You don't know your, your ex-lover, any explanation at all. Hey, being married it says the statement to any of your ex-lovers. It says, you weren't good enough. I found the right one. Yeah, Wendy, but you know, it's like they're coming at me now like, okay, like I so-called like I just forgot about them or like You I, did forget about it, them. Yes, F actually him. that is true, but I mean, you know, they don't have to come at me like, you know, like, oh, I'm so not down now because I didn't you, choose that way, you know? He snapped his finger. Could you possibly get moist to that, girls? <laughs> I mean, he, he said down and snapped his finger. I heard the pop all the way over here on Park Wendy, Avenue. Wendy, I'm saying, Miss no, Honey, a bit much. I know, but listen, your ex-lovers will heed to what you say based on the bass you drop in your voice mm. and the way in which you pronounce your words okay. and the cadence in which you speak to them. Do you understand yes. what I'm saying? I'll feel you, Wendy. Do not let them infiltrate your married life and hurt your wife. And your no, situation. I can't. I can't have that one. Well, you need to shut it down. Okay. No doubt. Okay. No doubt. Take care. Thanks a lot, Wendy. Bye bye. Bye. Now look, you won't hear me say this much, but no judgments. I, I you know, uh, what, wow. who, who are we to judge? Wow. Eh? Quite frankly, if a man was bisexual, though, I would want the masculine part of the bisexuality. I mean, you know what I mean? Did you hear him? He said, "Damn." Damn. <laughs> Turn over, Miss Hardy. Let me hit it from the back. You're quick on that. Quick on what? Yeah. Line number two, Stephanie's there. Nothing else? All right. Um, yeah, yeah, let's hop skip. Yeah, I know. It, it's, um, Sam is still on the phone. Oh, Crystal's on the phone. Okay, Crystal knows what to do. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Miss Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay, so you're 24 as well, and you've got nonstop issues with your landlord, but you've signed a one-year lease. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, how far are we along in this lease? Only four months. I moved in in August. Don't worry about it. You only have eight months left. Now, what are these nonstop issues? Well, before we moved in, he had there were things that there were supposed to be done, like the floors that were supposed to get done. Who and else? Who else living there with you, Steph? It's me, and my boyfriend. Okay. And my um, my two kids. Hi. Uh, they always leave the kids off on the end. Yeah, and I just, okay. I don't know. Because, see, the kids now make the difference in terms of me telling you to bounce or not. Because kids need stability. I mean, yes. adults need stability, too, but so do kids. Yes, they do. How, old are, how old are the kids? Five and eight. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, your kids are wow. older. Yeah, the, it's, well, you know. Your, it, your boyfriend, is that the kid's father? Well, my daughter, he has a son and I have a daughter. Okay, so, and both of the kids live there? Yes. Okay, so now, I'm sorry, now that I've got that information, now what about the landlord? Well, you know, he put in new floors, he didn't finish them, the windows are not fully corked, then he wasn't giving us proper heat, and the, now, the, some pipe bust in the, in, in upstairs, because he lives upstairs from us, it's a two-family house, yeah. and so the pipe bust upstairs, and now, there was water everywhere on mm. Saturday, and he has, like, Practically no intentions of fixing it anytime well, soon. Well, look, look. Here's the deal, and you know, I um, I would tell you to withhold your your rent, but you know, if you're not really good at saving, then you'll end up spending it on something else, and when your rent is finally due, you won't have the money to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be really disciplined when you withhold because. Anyway, um, and I would also um, suggest that you look for some of these websites where the landlord versus the tenant and the tenant versus the landlord, you know, that type of thing. I mean, get on your grind with the websites. You know, your last possible stop would be going to um, uh, an attorney that specializes in, in property. Mm. What does she call? What is 311? That's the New York number to find out everything that's going on in New York. Like if we need um, alternate sides of the street parking. Oh, call 311. Yep, landlord tenant problem. Yes. No heat. Call 311. Shaylin says. Thanks, Shaylin. Shaylin. Call 311. Yes. I don't know. I've, like, I've just, I was ready, my boyfriend and I were just like ready to move out. 
What? He wants does, to leave. Doesn't and, your and boyfriend like, throw up his voice and get some bass? I mean, what the hell good are men to have around if you're not going to kill spiders and raise your voice and and keep we, on? He at your- has. He has. Believe me, he has. And mm, it's like enough, the, the people who own the house is like they're completely without it. down on people. I sit back and look at him with admiration sometimes like, damn, daddy, get him. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, we, we've expressed... Uh, you know, our frustration to them numerous times. Yeah. And it's to the point where he's just like, well, we we, we have... Okay. okay, well, see, now there's a problem. See, the other problem, the other problem is that... And that's not for you to do, by the way. That's for him to do. No, you, you no, need the backup. right. Right, right, right. I am right. perfect backup for my situation. Move over, <laughs> Daddy. Let me get a piece. The, the other problem is that the people who own the house, I've known them since I was, like, in the sixth grade. Yeah, there's conflict of interest. Look, so, I, look, look, listen, you need to get yourself, first of all, your your man needs to get more bass in his voice, okay? Because all this, a lot of this can be stopped. <clears throat> uh, Goose, Trev, what do you say? A lot of this could be stopped when a man just gets the right bass in his voice. Yeah, you know, and you got to talk greasy. Uh, that, niggerish. I didn't want to say that word. You tell, your, tell your man to step up. Right now he's failing his family. He's got to step up. I'm sure he's a very sophisticated, nice young man, but not for nothing. Everybody needs a bit of block in them. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Ocean Township, and I know exactly what to do. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Yo, what's up better, in the water, man? What's you, up in the water? You better recognize the real. Okay? I wish you well. Take care, Stephanie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Especially if they're white, too. The white people get scared. <laughs> they get scared. <laughs> Some of you all, you get scared. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Brown <laughs> Yeah, well, we're going to sue you and, you know, I mean, just... Huh. You won. Goose, did you save me? Yeah. Thank God for the button. <laughs> Keep it where you got it. Advice Hour continues next. <laughs> it's windy, man. I've been talking to this young lady. She called me at home and I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right. So, yeah. Ow. So, what should I tell her? Just it, Tell her how you do it. The Wendy Williams Experience. You need to you need to sit down for right now. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> the Wendy Williams experience is on the radio. Don't forget about our thousand dollars every hour winner contest. Oh gosh. All the details are gonna be unfolding tomorrow morning, which is December first at six AM with the Steve Harvey morning show. And it has something to do with you signing up for the WBLS e newsletter. Find out about the e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Listen, this is a lot of money. $1,000 an hour? Come on. Okay. Also, tomorrow, WBLS, um, some of the radio personalities are going to be broadcasting live from Planet Hollywood at 1540 Broadway at 45th Street, collecting donations for the victims of Hurricane Katrina, all the needy families in the area. They want, um, we're going to be collecting your non-perishable foods, clothing, unwrapped toys, Um, If you would consider adopting a family, um, it's making somebody's holiday a little brighter. That would be an absolutely terrific thing. Um, A special thanks, by the way, to Krispy Kreme Donuts. They're going to be providing coffee and donuts for people who are coming out. And, um, you know, that's tomorrow at Planet Hollywood. Yeah, it's the holiday time of the year. And we're doing for other people. It feels good. We're having a Christmas party with a purpose. We're gearing up for it. December 17th at the Marriott <laughs> with Cameo, Jaheem, Donnell Jones, and Vivian Green, the booze, the food, Vaughn Harper, Steve Harvey, me, and Champagne, and everybody. Exactly. Tickets are available now at Ticketmaster for the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. December 17th. That's a Saturday. You know. All right, let's see if we can get to. Are there any lines on hold? I'm seeing. Yes. Line number four. Okay, this is. Um, <clears throat> is this you, Tail? Hello? Hello. Hi, what's your name? Tia. Oh, hi, Tia. It's Wendy. How are you? Hi, 
I see here that you're 32 years old and you're engaged to a man. You guys broke up two years ago and now you're interested in a new love, but you're engaged to the old guy? No, I was engaged to this guy. Uh, we broke up um, two years ago. Okay. Um, I have a friend that we've known each other for about six years, mm -hmm. and um, we started off as friends, but then, you know, we started liking each other. So he knows all about the guy I used to, I was engaged to. Okay, okay. And I really like him. You know, we've been through, you know, a lot. He knows about the guy that cheated on me, mm -hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. But he still comes around, and whenever he comes around, I forget about, like, the guy that I really like, that I would like to be with. And that's your new love interest? Yes. Well, you know, you're the gatekeeper to this whole situation, Tia. Why yeah. do you allow a man who you don't want anymore? If you were engaged, you were that close to making him yours for the rest of your life. If it's over, then it's got to be over. Okay. You know, in my opinion... When it comes to love, there is no gray area when you're making a decision. Like, like you already have a new love interest, right? Yeah. So you have no room in your life for a gray area with a man from the past. He's okay. either in and you're back in love and you're working towards marriage and you're sleeping together and you're... Or he's out. Because okay. right now, you are messing things up for you and your new love interest. I know. So now... It is up to you to set the rules because your ex-fiance is going to push you as far as he could. Because just because he's not with you or engaged to you uh, doesn't mean that he's happy for you to move on. You, have you ever heard of the phrase, if I can't have you, no one can? Exactly. Okay. Don't let him mess this new situation up for you. Not that okay. you're, you're going to get engaged and married to your new love interest, but for God's sakes, woman, give yourself a chance to move on. Do you want to move on or do you want to be back with yes. the man you were... Well, then yes. put some bass in your voice and let him know. Once again, this is where, once again, this is where it's all in your delivery and your cadence. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. I mean, your ex-man is not a stalker, is he? No, not at all. It's just that he don't, he doesn't understand a word, no. No, you and mean, yeah, no, yes, he does. You don't know how to deliver the blow, no. You need to deliver it. Okay. Like you mean it, if you mean it. Okay, and I, I think it, I've been going through this for like two years, oh, so I think I've made it now, so I'm like tired and I'm ready to move on. Yeah, because he's going to ruin it for you and any next man. He's going to yeah. ruin it for you. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ty. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Line number five is uh, Marianne from the Bronx. Her Hello. former friend turned her back on her during a difficult situation. She wants to know if she should be resentful. Well, Marianne, you're 53 years old. Yes, I am. So hi, you, this is Snobby Marianne. <clears throat> hi, it's very nice to have you here, Marianne. But you know, you are at a perfect age in life to be young enough to still do things and old enough to know better. That's right, I do know better. Usually, you see, if it was a man or something, I would know. Tell him get lost. <clears throat> Yeah. But some way or another, I let, um, you know, maybe female friends get away with more than they should. Yes. Now, what, um, if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. Marianne, what was the situation in which your friend turned your back, her back on you? Well, um, starting in 2000, I broke my leg. Uh-oh. Okay. After breaking my leg, it was one thing after another, health-wise. I was in the hospital for a month. Now, even though she lives uh, not too far away from the hospital... Mm -hmm. She only visited me uh, one time. Okay. Well, how close is she to you? Oh, what was that? How close is she to you? Best friend? Um, well, she was a good friend at one time. We worked together uh -huh. many years ago, and we have stayed friends since then. Well, we stayed friends for uh, approximately 30 years. And then on the other hand, Marianne, you're 53. You're young enough to know, old enough to see the Grim Reaper. At looking at, you're looking at the, the, the <laughs> second part of your I mean, you're, you're enjoying the, the second part of your life. Yes, that's right. You know, if you're lucky, you got another 30 years to go. Mm -hmm. I'll you, be lucky if I do see another 30. Exactly. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of your friends are either dropping like flies or getting sick. So you have a real appreciation from a mature woman's perspective about friendship and health. I mean, do you want to spend your time being resentful? Or do you want to just curse her out and then hug it out and then go shoe shopping? I think I might want to curse her out and hug her out. And then go shoe shopping. Yeah. Follow your heart. No, man. then come to see you at uh, Don's and Divas. With her? No, she's no, no, no. No, she's not a Don's and Divas. Oh. She what? doesn't, she wouldn't want to do that. Oh. She's like a play and lunch and movie and. Oh, one yeah. of those. Well, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Mm -hmm. 
But, um, he doesn't share any of my interests. He wouldn't know who Wendy uh, was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're the young version of 53. She's the older version. Yeah. Yeah. You're the drop it like a top version. Mm -hmm. well, I'm trying to still drop it. But what you still, what, what you want to do, Marianne, in other words, is you want to hug it out and then maybe go see Color Purple or something like that with your girlfriend. Yeah, that's what she would do. But I, that's what I'm trying to decide because follow, after the cursing out. Fo follow your heart. You're going to curse it out. Your guys are mm -hmm. uh, mature enough to curse it out, hug it out, realize that your friends are dropping like flies, and then you guys will go shoe shopping. I wish you well, Marianne. You think I should just tell her that, uh, you know, I think that you, something's been on my mind? I think you should. Uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And then I think you should hug it out. Uh, okay. I think I will. Don't let don't don't let this uh, pass. If if you guys want to be really be friends, you know you're you're uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but you're too old to um, to let go of the good ones. If this is a good one, then then it's worth holding on to. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. All so right. I was wondering if after the cursing out, they would you know she might get resentful of me, mm -hmm. but I think you know mm -hmm. she's old enough to weather it. And if she's not, oh well, then then I guess the friendship really is over. Take right. care. Bye bye. Wait, 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 wait. I have one more thing. Okay. Now, you even shouted me out the other day about the black leadership uh, dinner. Yeah, we already gave away the passes, though. Oh, no. You don't have one more left? No. Please? Sorry, Marianne. I did. It would have been your type of thing. It's black tie. Sure is. Monday night. Yeah. Yep. At the fabulous Chelsea Lighthouse. Yep. Vaughn, no more, huh? Vaughn Harper's wife called at the last minute. She wanted... I, I did have a pair of pass, passes taped to the bottom of the coffee table in the office. Oh, no. There was my fallout passes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they fell out. Huh? Yeah, and they fell out into Mrs. Harper's hands. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Wendy. All right, Marianne. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love to see the older women being friends and stuff like that. When my mother gets together, my mother and her girlfriends, they all range in age from... My mother has young girlfriends, too, but I mean, her closest ones, they're like 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. When those girls get together, I just, I can only hope. I mean, you can only hope and you hear them key key and talk about stuff like college and pledging and what happened at Martha's Vineyard. And then they go to the grandkids then they go to what's on sale at Saks. Then they talk about Kohl's having their big 50% off sale today, but an extra 20% if you're a senior citizen. <laughs> Mrs. Lopez called me 10 o'clock last night. She said, you know, tell your mother and father. You know, that it is an extra 20% off for senior citizens. I said, thanks, Mrs. Lopez. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But I'd love to see the older girls together. I just, you know, we can only hope. Yeah. All right. Uh, everybody keep it where you got it. It's Wendy until 7 on WBLS. Wendy William rocking your station. Dropping hits across the whole nation. Wendy William rocking your afternoon. Yeah, 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 it's Advice Hour. A special shout out to Rollo and Lord and 40 Bandit Entertainment. They got the mots. All right, so let's go to the telephone. We can dip to, um, how about line number two? Tiffany is 26, and she's at the crossroads. She needs help with a career decision. Hey, Tiff. Yes, hi, Wendy. How you doing? Good. Okay, so you're not sure what career path to take, it says here. And you're 26, so what's your educational background? Well, actually, I do have a career right now. I'm teaching. Okay. Okay, and I teach pre-K, but I'm kind of unsure about it. I've been sure unsure about it for like maybe a few months now. But uh, when I was in college, I had two majors. It was um, education and English, creative writing. Okay. So I wanted to know, um, you think I can try to do something with my creative writing? I mean, I wrote poetry, short stories. Poems, oh, I, I, I wouldn't, quit, I wouldn't okay. quit my day job. No, I know that. Okay. I mean, sure. I mean, something like you doing poetry and short stories is, is attainable within the... Um, Within the structure of you still, you know, pursuing your career as a as a pre kindergarten teacher. Uh, now, what you also might want to think about doing is how about raising the age of the students that you teach? I mean, creative writing, language arts, that's great for like sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Well, you know what? Um, my certification is only up to the third grade. Okay. And I really don't want to teach no further. Got yet. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Depending <laughs> on your district, I understand. Nork. Uh, my my brother and my sister in law too, Nork public school teachers. Uh huh. No, mm. no one going no further than the third. Maybe. I understand. I understand. Okay. We'll pursue your extra interests on the side. Okay. And I wish you well. You don't have to choose at this point, Tiff. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Wendy. Take, take care. Bye bye. All right. Love your show. I love you for listening. Line number six. There's an anonymous person who's 29. Family doesn't like her husband. Hello. 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 
Is this you? Your family doesn't like your husband? No. Is this line number six, Goose? Yeah. Hold on, sir. Then go to line number four and see what, what happens. Okay, hold on, sir. Okay. Hello? Hey, what's up, Wendy? How you doing? <laughs> All right, well, clearly neither one of these guys are, <laughs> are the dude. How are you? All right, you hold on a second. Let me, in all fairness, go back to line number six. Okay, hi. How can I help you? I don't have you on my computer. What's going on? Wendy? Yes? Yes. Hi. I'm calling because me and my mom don't get along. Oh. And I want to know what to do. I don't know how to, like, I've reached out to her a thousand times, and I know I'm the child, and I shouldn't be doing that. Yes, I'm grown with my own life, but at the same time, it's like... A okay. Lot Did the dissension between you and your mother start after you came out of the closet or before? What do you mean, Wendy? Well, I'm hearing something, and I'm just, I want to be honest. What are you hearing? Is she, does she have a conflict with your lifestyle? My lifestyle? What do you mean? <laughs> Wednesday, I'm not gay. Oh. oh uh, then, well, then I apologize. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, you'll be ready to be honest with yourself and me. <laughs> Wendy. How you doing, Miss Honey? How you doing? Let, 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 <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Wendy, stop cutting up. All the sense. See? Mm-hmm. See? Okay, you and your mother don't get along. Right. We'll, we'll play this game your way. What is the tension in your relationship? I guess it has to do with, um, I guess, the upbringing. You know what I mean? Like, she never really, I'm not going to say she never was there, but it was more, I think it's jealousy of my grandparents. Because your grandparents are the ones that pretty much were hands-on to raise you? Yes. So, we were more like brother and sister than mother and well, son. Well, how old are you? I'm 28. And how old is your mom? My mother is 46. Yeah. Are you sure there's nothing else underlying? I'm sure. Okay. We'll have so what do I do? Do I reach? Do I continue to reach out and yeah. still get attitude? I mean, it's like when we're together and we talk, it's venom and venom. It never, it never stops. Listen, it, look, you can't push um, <clears throat> the relationship to work, but what you can do is chip away at the pain, and somewhere. After you chip away, there's going to be this big, beautiful diamond, and that diamond is going to be the love that you actually have with each other. I love her, Wendy. I, I do. I, I understand. It's your mom. You know. And you're her baby boy. <sighs> chip away, just little by little. Okay, Wendy. You start out with, you know, two-hour visits. Then maybe you get it up to three hours. Then you pull back for a month, and you don't see her for, you know, a month. And, you know. I'm trying to get her to go to the Dons and Divas. I'm trying to say, Mom, come on, let's go. See, you want to know what? That's why you guys get along more like brother and sister than you do like mother and son. If you're trying to recapture mother and son, then what you need to do is keep the brown juice away and the loud music down. But we've never done that. But you said you get along more like brother and sister. Meaning, no. Meaning <clears throat> as far as... Like, okay, just how we act around family and how we talk. But for the most part, it's like... I do you want her to be more her brother, your brother and sister? Or do you want her to be the mom that she never was? She can't get back that time. So okay. I, I wouldn't... So then, so then prior to Dons and Divas, why don't you guys go out and have like a nice dinner? See, what you really... I mean, as much as I would love for you all to be at my party... Uh, I would say that whatever you do with your mother, if you're planning on rebuilding what you have, then you need to be doing things that incite um, conversation while the action is going on. You know, the music is loud in a party. True. It's like going to the movies with your mother. You're facing forward. You're in a dark room. You and your mother need, a, you have 28 years of dialogue you need to open up. Not to mention what she's about to learn about you in the next three years. Oh, wow. How you doing? You see what I'm saying? Okay. So you need to go places where you can have dialogue with her. Okay. And, and I would say push. You only have one mom. Of course. Okay. And you can't fit 28 years of dialogue in one meeting. You chip away. Chip away. Little by little. And fights are okay. Yeah. All right. Take All right. care. Bye, Thank Miss you Honey. Too. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Line number one. Um, Victoria is 30 and her girlfriend's birthday is in January. She's having a surgery party and wants ideas for birthday. Well, you've asked the right one, baby. Uh-huh. Victoria? Yes. What are we talking about? Like a Botox doctor? No, no. Actually, I'm having major surgery. I'm having surgery on my back. Okay. What What are you having done? Um, I have a herniated disc. So oh, horrible. this is real. I thought this was plastic. No. Oh, okay. So I'm going to be incapacitated <clears throat> for about a month to... Eight weeks, 
So then you wheel every, you turn your bedroom into the playland, and everybody, you, your bed is the focal point, and that's where you'll be laying up like the Queen of Sheba in some really nice pajamas. You pick the pajamas, okay? okay. You have all the serving. Do you, are you married? No, actually, um, my girlfriend. It's my girlfriend. Okay. So you, you and your girlfriend will invite, you're a lesbian. Right. And you guys will invite a bunch of your friends over. Okay, I could do that. Well, I, I don't know. I'm asking you. Is that what you wanted to do? You said you were interested in ideas for a, a, a party or a birthday idea? Well, her, her birthday is in January, and I'm having my surgery in January. Oh. And we're out, you know, in Pennsylvania in the middle of the woods. Oh, then there's nothing to do. Well, well, I, mean, I want to bring it back into the city before You then. can't go anyplace. Why would you mess around with your back? You're 30, you're 30 years old. I mean, in terms of bad backs, you're an old woman. You know what I'm saying? When you start messing up your back and you're over 20 years old, those are the kind of mess ups that last for a lifetime. Don't don't do anything. What are you crazy? If she loves you, if she's your true girl, then then she won't press you to do anything. Let, we agreed not to do anything. Let her go out and have fun. You need to lay down and, and heal, honey. I know. 30 is like 80 when you think about the back. Hey, thanks for calling. Uh, keep it here, everybody. Cheryl Lee Ralph coming up at the top of the hour. How you doing? It's windy, man. Me and my wife have been married for 15 years. He's threatening to leave. What did you do? Had a problem with drugs. You got yeah. the drug voice. Yeah. Hey, man. Just asking, what's your drug of choice? You name it. Coke? Uh, yeah. Weed? Yeah. Crack? Yeah. Heroin? Yeah. E-pills? Yeah. Whippets? Alcohol. Gorilla? Yeah. PCP? Yeah. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. 107.5 WBLS New York. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. What's up? This is New Edition. This is Jack A. Harry. I'm the Reverend Al Shop. This is Brenda K. Star. It's your boy Tracy. Yeah, this your boy Lloyd. This is Tawanda Braxton. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra. And right now you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy Williams. Welcome, everybody, to the Hour of Truth. Any moment now, Cheryl Lee Ralph will be coming in the studio. And she has been to the show before. She is no stranger to this situation. Cheryl Lee Ralph is going to be honored with the first ribbon. A uh, red. Oh, hello. Oh, with your fabulous hair, girl. No, but look at you. you. You look great. Marriage everybody. is really working for you. Yes, the, it does. Hello, the hello, senator, hello, the hello. senator must Hi, be honey. putting it down hello, as a husband. Oh, we we give He's him two his... stilettos up. Yes, yes. Thank is you. that your natural hair? Is that a weave? What is it? Whatever it is, you know what? it looks very natural and very nice. You know why? Because I every now and then I have to take the the weave out, out. and I have to let my hair out. Yeah. So I like to fill it in, like you know. Yeah, you have your right fill-ins to finish the bottom. But Vanessa exactly. Williams does that also. That's it. But I like to have my hair out sometimes because I like to go like this. Yeah, you like to you know? scratch. Exactly. I got yeah. to. I got to think. Clearly. But you know, the funny thing is, though, Cheryl Lee Ralph, is that you must have amazingly thick healthy hair to begin with because we know you from Moesha and all the many years you've been in front of us from Broadway and whatnot. You're a girl who's not scared of a full weave. That's right. I believe in hair. Hair is power. That's what I say. Oh my hair gosh. Is girl, you and hair I is power. I walked into your office and I have a sign that says it's not easy being the queen. Is that, I look up. Who's got the same sign? Me. You. Thank you. Hair is power. Hair but is power. hair also breaks off your edges, your scalp, and exactly. all like that. You really have to work hard on making sure if you're going to do a weave, you have to work extra hard on keeping your own hair up. Because too many sisters take the weave off and they got no hair. But it gets addictive. So then who wants to go, um, you know, with You got to let it go sometimes. It's like every now and then I got to take these nails, nails off. off. I got to do it. Yeah. I have to be able to go like this, you know, whatever. Do you ever take it off. wear wigs in between your downtime? You know what I hate about wigs? Wigs is I hate looking and being fabulous, and my man is around me, and then at night I got to take my hair off and hang it on the bedpost. Yeah, can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to do that. It. Well, now that you're married to the senator, you got him, and a lot of women would say once you got him. Oh no 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 no! no. Oh. Once you got preach, him, you preach. got to keep him, exactly. baby. Exactly. It's always got to be fresh. Yeah. It's always got to be new. Yes. It's always got to be wild. Yes. Now, you guys got married in Jamaica, what, eight no, months ago? No, we didn't get married in Jamaica. We We're, got married in L.A. In L.A.? Yeah. So your, July. Fam your family's from Jamaica, though. That's right. I got confused. Mm -hmm. In July. Yeah. And so it's been working. You're glowing. 
I I'm happy. Do you, what do your kids call him, Senator? No, they call him Vincent. Do you, call, <laughs> do, you call, do you call him Vincent or the Senator more when you're out in public? Oh, I call him Vincent. Oh, gosh. in public, I call him the Senator in, the in private. Yes. Perfect. Absolutely. Because all that power, we talked about that before. It's, it's lo- that's addictive. Mm, that's yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Senator. Mr. Senator. Come here, Senator. Mm. Absolutely. And you're young. Well, no, you're, you guys are like the same age. Yes. But you've got a, younger, a young spirit. Thank you. Whereas, and I've never met the Senator, but I imagine because he's a politician, he is very stoic. Um, a little bit, but he's got such a... He's got such a warm, fun side. I mean, he just makes me laugh. He's yeah. sort of like a blend between Frank on Moesha okay. and um, Dr. Mm. Huxtable. Oh, yeah. that's so a nice blend. Yeah, he's very nice. That's a really nice blend. Mm-hmm. So now, what brings Cheryl Lee Ralph here, you might ask? She is... Is it still Cheryl Lee Ralph? Or Absolutely. She, okay. That's right. what I'm used to that. Yeah, that's how you make your money. Thank you. Hello. And everybody keeps saying, well, you're changing your name, you're changing... No. No, oh, my name is Cheryl Lee Ralph. Cheryl I'm Ralph. used to it. Okay. I like it. Well, <laughs> Cheryl Lee Ralph, everybody, is being honored with the first Red Ribbon Leadership Award for her steadfast commitment to raising HIV AIDS awareness. It's terrific. Thank you. World AIDS Day is tomorrow, December 1st. And this is all happening over at the United Nations. Yeah. I, I love that whole idea. You know when you're little and you think about, oh, I'm going to go visit the United Nations. I couldn't imagine that I'm going to be receiving an award at A leadership United. award. Okay. The senator and the leader. Okay, there it is. Wow. The two of us. Good power. Thank you. Mm. So tell us where we are in terms of um, AIDS and HIV awareness. Do you, you know, you do, you do so much work. And every year you have your sisters sing. Divas. Uh, divas Diva, simply sing, singing. Simply singing. Yeah. And, and you do just, you're like the Liz Taylor of, of the more um, now black set. You know, because you're a now woman. You're not an old crow. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But, but you, you really are. For years you've been doing stuff. Yeah, at least 15, 16 yeah. years now. And I tell you, it, everybody asks me, like, when did it start? And for me, it really all started with Dream Girls mm-hmm. when there was this secret disease that guys were just dying from. Yeah. And I, I say it over and over. At that time, I saw an ugliness come out of human beings that really disturbed me. I mean, when I say that young people were dying and their families were putting them out, when yeah. people were being dropped off in, in hospital driveways, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dropped off in churches, I remember that. I mean, it was just, what, 20 years ago, yeah. but I remember that so clearly. And and I said, this has got to stop. Yeah. And then as it, you know, when I started doing Divas, I had no idea that when we would get up on the stage that at this point now, we would represent the fastest growing newly infected people with the disease. And black that women. is black women. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's very, very difficult. And then so often we look for other people to blame for the disease when it happens to us. And I is it the down low brother or the low down brother, right. whichever what you want to say. Right. But I have to say to young women and women, period, if you were not protecting yourself first, putting yourself That's first, right. That's right. using a condom each time, every time, or if you, if, if you thought that you could abstain, I don't tell anybody about the abstinence. Because right. to me, abstinence is like starving. So I'm like, yeah, so I'm not sex. trying to thank mm-hmm. you. God has hardwired people to have sex and eat. Right. So if you're not willing to starve, I'm not going to say to you, then abstain, don't do it. Right. But if you're young and not responsible mm-hmm. enough to do it safely, don't do it. Right. Abstain, think twice until you're able to use a condom each time, every time. Exactly. I tell all them little boys, use your big head, not your small head. That's right. Come if you want to talk to Cheryl Lee Ralph, by the way, we're going to open up the phone lines in a moment. 866-GET-WENDY. Um, start calling now. We're going to put you on hold, uh, the screener, and then and then I'll put you on with Cheryl Lee Ralph. But uh, yeah, so young women have got to mm-hmm. themselves to take responsibility for themselves. It's not like we're in Uganda, you know. Yes, it's not like you, we're in Uganda and gang rape is yes. the order of the day. Exactly, we are right here, and young women should be able. I, and I think sometimes that mothers need to have honest conversations with their children mm-hmm. early about sex because if you don't teach them your children are going out into the street and they're going to get some bad information right. i personally would like my children to have the proper information yes. the best 
I can give it to them. Yes. I tell my son, come ask your mother. You got some questions? Come ask me. That's right. And I will tell you what the real deal is. Have you ever been to the Gay Men's Health Crisis dance a No. Oh, my gosh. You know, that's legendary. I'm going to be part of that I on Saturday. Yeah, that. I'm really, it's over at the Manhattan Center. And who are you doing it with? Jody Watley yeah. is over there. Jody did Divas this year, and she was just so outstanding. She's still Jody. Oh, Jody is still Jody, yeah. and she is just, talk about a young, fresh spirit. Yeah. She is just all of that. That's my girl. Jay I Rodriguez Jody. from Queer Eyes, and oh, also right. Tyson Beckford, the supermodel and stuff. So I'm doing How's something he doing? on Saturday. Uh, he's doing better, and back on his feet since the car accident. She's yeah. talking about everybody. That's right. Right, because I my heart went out to yeah, him. Yeah, I it, was like, whoa. Well, you know, if he was a woman, and, and it's a shame there's a double standard. A man with a cut on his face is exciting. A woman with a cut on her face is, you know, Mm-mm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and then also on Monday, I'm going to be hosting. Um, I'm, excuse me, I'm co-chairing the National Black Leadership's Commission on AIDS. All right. They're having their big black tie gala. It's at the Lighthouse, right. and as a matter of fact, Harry Belafonte is going to be there, and he's going to be um, presenting an award to Kenneth Cole. You give him a big hug for me, and you say, Harry. Cheryl said, I must give you this. Oh! There you're right. Go, uh, just hug him up tight. Uh, oh, there you <laughs> All right, so are there any calls on hold for Cheryl Lee? All right, you got your headphones on. Okay, let, my headphones let's go on. to the phone. Hello, hi. Hi. Hi, and Cheryl Lee Ralph is on the phone, and I'm Wendy. How are you? I know who you are. Well, go ahead and speak to our <laughs> guest. Hi, Miss Ralph. Hi. I just wanted to know, are you originally from Long Island? Am I what? From Long Island. Strong Island? Of course. <laughs> Come on now. And your father is Dr. Ralph, who worked at the Hempstead Middle School? Absolutely. And do you happen to know the McManuses? Yes. Uh-oh. Okay. You Danny. know my mom. I'm sure I do. Valerie. There you go. Yay. Yay. All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Your, your father is his doctorate? Yes. A DR period in what? And music and education. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so you were you were raised to do well. You know, as, you know. Hang on. The a first, the first girl you on your block. Door wide all of that. All of, of that. Yeah. To be a credit to your race. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. To represent well. All of that. Yes. To have your grandmother be able to say, "That's and my granddaughter." Yeah. All, all of, of that. that. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? You're on the radio, and Cheryl Lee Ralph is here. Hey, Miss Ralph. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I fell in love with you from Moesha. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed doing that series. And real quick, my mom, she says that you look fabulous. Thank you. Tell her I love that. She that you were acting when she was in, like, younger. Oh, Well, tell her we were young at the same time. Exactly. But then she says that black women... Are well preserved. No, darling, black don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I wanted to ask you, how come you're not going to be in the movie for Dream Girl? Oh, good why question. aren't I in the? You know something? Sometimes I wonder about that as well. Oh. But um, I, I, my ego was given quite a stroke in that the, it came back that I would be a distraction, and I thought Beyonce, me. A distraction. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. I would rather that. watch you than Beyonce. Oh, thank you. But she's really Beyonce quite talented. Because when Beyonce does interviews, I don't know if you noticed that she has no personality. Oh, okay. It's just a pretty face, and that's it. We'll talk about well, this after Miss Ralph leaves. But thank you. But Miss Ralph, you are gorgeous. And if thank I was straight, I would please. <laughs> but anyhow. <laughs> thank you. That's the big compliment. <laughs> thank you very Continue much. Continue doing what you're doing, lovely. Thank you very much. And hi, Wendy. Hi. Mm. Bye-bye. Oh, he said, mm, there was shade at the end. So, now this is tomorrow at the United Nations headquarters. Yes. Um, is this is this a big to-do, uh, the, 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 uh, the presentation? You know what? This is the, fir- this is the first time that they've been, they're going to be giving this award. So, you know, the first time they usually do anything, it's usually with all great intention. Right. And you know what? Hey. I'm one of the first, so I'm going to be there. Oh, what are you? What are you wearing, Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress? Don't you love those? They go. How do you, did I tell you that I love those dresses? No, I'm telling you that I do. I love. I love those them too. dresses. They take you from a luncheon to get a leadership all award day long. to uh, to a, a black tie if you get all black. They're just the best. They're fabulous. I, you know, Diane von. Well, wait, okay, I know we don't have much time. Diane von Furstenberg, when I was doing Dreamgirls, was the first like big designer to come. 
to the show and she came backstage wow. to ask for me. Wow. And she gave me a huge bottle of a perfume that she had at the time called Volcan Amor. Okay. And I always remember the fact that Wow, Diane von Furstenberg came and asked for me. Yeah. And, you know, we had a great conversation. Yes. She was just wonderful. So I always wear those wrap dresses. I love them. I, I go love them. right downtown. Her store is on Bond Street. Hillary is the manager. Bond Street. Bond. That's way downtown. Uh, uh, but listen, you can double park your car right out in front, no cops. Oh. oh I, go, okay. I go in there, I never park in a garage. I just keep my flashes on. There I go right in. Yeah, but you're Wendy. See, this is your city. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> you are the queen. And you know what? They all know you. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh, my gosh, another thing in common. I love that. Well, it's Cheryl Lee. Oh, what's going on really quick with acting and you? Oh, and I just finished doing um, Seventh, Seventh Heaven last night. Okay. You know, I was playing that post-op transsexual on Barbershop. Yes. So that was very interesting. A whole new group of fans yeah. after that. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. And I loved it when the trannies wrote in. They said, you're a good tranny. I said, Ooh. oh, thank you. They called me the sweet mangina. Oh. So then, um, what else is going on? I'm doing, I'm doing some writing, actually. So many women have written me their stories and in and, and connection, being infected or affected by HIV AIDS. So I'm working on a one-woman piece about uh, HIV AIDS called Sometimes I Cry. Now, and, go ahead. No, go ahead. And I'm we're going to do a premiere of that in um, L.A. on f Saturday night. Now, okay. you're, you're such a, um, a, a, a wise older woman. When I say older, I'm talking, I'm getting ready to talk about Brandy. So you're older in terms of uh, her. And I really consider that a good thing. But, you know, but growing you, old does not happen to everybody. Right. And I will never be old. Right. I will because always be. Thank you. But, so I will always be like you said, like the way you describe yeah. it. But growing older for me has been a great blessing. You really embrace I know it. I got, I embrace it. And if you keep your young spirit, then the young girls, they come to you for advice and they yes, feel like they're they talking not do. to a mother, but to a big sister whose advice the they truth. can really value. Has she talked to you about love and the breakup of she and Quentin or anything like that? I have not spoken to her since Lamont's funeral. Oh. I have not spoken to her since then. So. By the way, did you hear that Lamont's baby's mother went into the car dealership with an American Express card and tried to charge, uh, it was like a $60,000 car. And the people over at the um, Shearson Lehman or wherever he had his original, you know, big accounts and yes. stuff, they were in charge of the baby's mother's credit card and put the kibosh on the sale right there in the dealership. It, that was a big account, I know. In the meantime, they said she doesn't need a new car because Lamont just bought her a car prior to his death. What she was trying to do was hook up her boyfriend, her living lover. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 All I want to know is, did you see Oprah today? No. Who was on? Never mind, because I'm not going to start anything. Well, tell me what they were talking no, about. No, I'm pornography. Do you do you enjoy pornography? I do. No, it's not my thing. Okay. But it was the person that they were talking about. Oh, in Superhead. Connection. Superhead. Who? No. I don't know who they who are they talking about. Uh, girl, don't don't. Jenna never Jameson, start. No. Mr. Marcus. You ask somebody else in this room. Oh no. Somebody else in this room could tell you because I don't know. Does does oh, oh no? Somebody pick up the phone. Goose, pick up the phone. Somebody's calling. Does what? Oprah enjoy pornography? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, girl. Is Oprah a lesbian? I, why do I know? I don't know. Kurt I Franklin. don't know. Oh, they're talking about Kurt Frank Franklin? Oh, and pornography. Yes. Kurt Franklin, yeah. He enjoys pornography. Um, he, you know, he's talked about that. I mean, there are other things about Kurt Franklin. How you doing? How you doing? That, um, I mean, there's a whole... <laughs> Cheryl Lee, you could let it out. Don't don't hold it in, because otherwise you'll have a heart attack. <laughs> No, I don't think it's a secret. I, I don't know. I don't know. But that's big that he was on Oprah talking about that. Yeah. When I heard that, I was like, wow. And you want to know what? He's also got a big song that everybody, ooh, everybody loves. He's got a new song with that, with that, you know, bounce feel to it. Really? Can I get a witness? Where's that Kurt Franklin song? Let Cheryl Lee hear just a piece of it. Affiliates, we're about to go into the break. Yeah, he's still managing to do it. You think God's forgotten about you. I love this song. Exactly. I love this exactly. song. Exactly. Woo! That's it. Yeah. Do you remember the original to this? Yeah. Haven't you had Patrice Russian? Russian. Patrice Russian. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. yeah. She always right. sang so high. She did. I've been looking for you. 
Haven't you heard? All right. On that three-part harmony. Oh. Shirley Ralph, everybody. She is the first Red Ribbon Leadership Award recipient for her steadfast commitment to HIV and AIDS awareness. Continue to do the good work. Thank you. We'll keep you in our thoughts regarding accepting your award tomorrow, Thank December so 1st, much. on World AIDS Day. Yeah. Over at the United Nations. Okay, everybody, give it up for Shirley Ralph. Keep it where you Thank got you. it. We gossip and talk with each other <laughs> more next. Wendy, man. I'm constantly sleeping with my baby's daddy. He is engaged to get married to someone else. Should I give it all up and say, well, I try to have a relationship here? You can't have a relationship. He's engaged to somebody else. He's about to get married. Really, I just can't take it. The Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, Thank you. Oh, my God. It ain't over yet. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. <laughs> Listen to what the winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win tomorrow morning beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBL Live. Mm. Mm. Where the winning is so easy. It's the Wendy Williams experience nonstop till 7 o'clock. Then it's Vaughn Harper with the quiet storm. Cheryl Lee Ralph, she is like, she is one of my favorites, you know. Big sister in my head. She's been to the show. This is probably her fourth time, fifth time. You know, coming around, she comes and she talks about, you know, her projects and things like that. And we've had, I, um, you know, many interviews within interviews. She's just a, a, a wonderful woman. She's, um, like I said, she's like big sister in my head. So the phone lines are open for you guys to use. I just wanted to let you guys know that the tickets for our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose are going fast, but there's still some left for you, my friends. You need to call Ticketmaster as soon as possible because December 17th is right around the corner. 212-307-7171. The Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis is the place to be, um, which is at 45th Street and Broadway. There's food and drink and live entertainment, including Jaheem and Cameo. And so it's just going to be wonderful. And we're doing it all for the purpose of giving money to the anti-domestic violence programs, Safe Horizon and Day One. And a big shout out to the New York City Department of Health and also a shout out to Preferred Equity Solutions and Razak Hair Products. Thank you so much to three of you for helping to sponsor our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. And um, one more thing I wanted to tell you about before we go to the phone. WBLS, well, you know, we're proud sponsors of TV 411. That is a particular program that helps you improve your reading and math skills. Watch TV 411 Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. For any information regarding the radio station, um, you can always check out our website at WBLS.com. Don't forget, tonight is the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. And, you know, if, if I can just make a little suggestion to you. If I were you, I would come with a little bit of an appetite. Now, you know, we always have food there. However, the food is no longer bust in. It's already in-house. We've got a delicious... The Laugh Factory has finally opened up their kitchen. Artichoke dip, pizza, burgers, mozzarella sticks, chicken fingers, chicken sandwiches, spring rolls. Oh, my mouth is watering. Oh, please. I'm eating dots and drinking water until I get to the Laugh Factory tonight. Then I'm going to have a little bit of everything and, and some drinks. 42nd Street and 8th Avenue, Times Square. That's uh, the location. Doors open up at 8 o'clock and showtime starts about 9 o'clock. Shout out to Ken Black. Special shout out to Capone. You know what? Shout out to Will Sevens also and shout out to Rob Stapleton. You know, the top dogs are comp. You, know, you guys are just, you just do the damn thing. Anyway, so I'll see you guys tonight. If you've never been to the Laugh Factory before, let me just let you know ahead of time. There's probably no other place that you could think of to uh, attend by yourself and have the best time. If you can't get your crew together, come by yourself. So what? We're all there for one purpose, to laugh, have a little something to drink and a little something to eat. You know? So, you know, don't be nervous. Men and women. It's a meat market in there. Oops. I mean, we have a lot of fun in there, but it is a meat market. I'm telling you, <laughs> yay. Hey, you need to loosen up at your office. All you all come over. 
I'll see you today at the Laugh Factory. It's the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. So, um, who can we go to the phone lines? <clears throat> All right, let's just hit something. Michael Jackson's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, by the way, has reportedly admitted to newspapers in Ireland uh, what people have been suspecting for a long time, and that is that... Um, Here's her here's her quote. Michael knows the truth. He is not the natural father of Prince Jr. and Paris. He has to come clean. I have no information whatsoever about, about the identity of the semen donor of either child as much as semen was obtained anonymously from the semen bank under an agreement of confidentiality. So, in the meantime, Prince is eight and Paris is seven. And I figured we probably already guessed that. But uh, thank you, Debbie Rowe. Uh, hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Yeah, my name is Sima Wendy. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I want to, I want to know an advice. I don't know if you're on the air, Wendy. Can we just let me come on the air right now? Yeah, your your phone is sounding terrible. I'm not even going to be able to continue this conversation with you. Oh, I'm getting away from the radio right now. Yeah. I really want to speak with you. I've been trying to call you for like a week now, okay. but I couldn't get to you, Wendy. All right, I'll see if I can decipher what you're saying. What's going on? Okay. Um, I've been married for like three years now. And, huh? hello? Yeah. I've been married for like three years Mar now. Mar married and three my years. husband brought me from Africa here. Okay. I didn't know we already had wife and kids here. Oh, oh. So when I got here, I tell you, it took me to work immediately. And I started working, and I was giving him my paychecks and stuff. Uh -oh. And I had a do and I had a brother. Wow. He, asked, he said I couldn't keep my daughter here because he was paying child support that I should send my daughter. She was eight months that I should send her back to my mother in Africa, mm -hmm. which I did. And when I stopped giving him money, he asked me to move out of the house. Yeah. So I don't know what to do now. He's threatening me that he's gonna go to the INS and he's not gonna. Oh, papers and stuff, but they already gave me a temporary green card, and he said he's not going to do it no more. I don't know. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> need to go back there. Or How what? old are you? I'm 26. 26. Yeah. You need this marriage to stay in the country? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'm true with. I think I'm true with it, but but I'm not stuck. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one here. I don't have my parents here, and so. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you, you have to you have to take a leap of faith at some point in life. Uh, you really want to stay here in America? Hello? Yeah, because it's here. Okay, the land of I plenty. like it here. I know. All right, well, this is what you do. Um, you, need, <clears throat> you need to speak with somebody uh, who's proficient in immigration. And it's not always okay. a high-priced lawyer. And then you need to find, you need to let this person know that you came here, uh, you know, with your husband... But yeah. but now your husband's already married here. You want a divorce. You were bamboozled, and and might I add, a bit naive for a twenty six year old woman. I mean, you know, it, woman, you've got to take blame for a lot of this. As a matter of fact, from what from what you've told me, most yeah. of this is your fault. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean. So it's, now it's time to grow up, and it's going to be time to get a divorce, yeah. and and you would like to stay here. And your your child needs you here, and you will not be giving this man any more your paychecks. You're done with him. Yeah, it does. Like, um, I don't know if I could take him to Shasta, but would you want to go back to Africa, where where you know you're more comfortable oh. with everything, or do you want to stay and you want to fight and stay in America? Yeah, I want to stay. Okay, so if you want to find out the questions to, or the answers to the questions that you don't know, you need yeah. to get in touch with somebody uh, um, in immigration. An immigration attorney. Okay. And it, it, now, uh, Illegal Goose says, get in touch can with I, an immigration attorney. Okay, can I get a number, sir? You know, honey, we have the yellow pages here in the United okay. States. Yeah. Okay. Look in the you. Look in the yellow pages, and there's going to, going to be, what, what borough do you live? I live in the Bronx. Okay. Um, you look in the Bronx uh, uh, yellow pages, and you're going to see is, attorneys, it's going to say right there in the yellow pages that specialize in immigration situations. Okay, thank you very now, much. Now you're going to rack up quite the attorney fee. So you might want to start with the freebie uh, helplines first. Okay. <clears throat> okay? Okay, thank you very much. I, and I, I wish you well. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. It was painful to talk to her. Yeah. All right, you guys, we're going to continue through with the break, and we'll be back. I did want to gossip, gossip, gossip about Jen Jennifer Gardner and Matthew Knowles, and we still haven't talked about Michael Irving. I want to talk to you about Nick Lachey.
uh, I wanted to talk about Barbara Walters and her Barbara Walters um, special, <laughs> if any of you saw it. So, keep it where you got it. It's Wendy Williams Experience, straight three till seven o'clock on 107.5 WBLF. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gonna blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams Experience. 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 about a month ago that Lenny Kravitz is going to um, have a fashion house. We'll add to that a home line also. Here's his quote. Excuse me. Here's his quote. I'm working on a fashion house and home line. Everyone's doing it. You got Puff and J-Lo and Gwen Stefani doing great jobs. I've been just kind of laying back. Now it's time for me to do it. It's in- it's interesting. It's more of a lifestyle brand. It's something that is just another outlet for me. I'm not doing it, though, to put my name on things to sell. Obviously, yes, it's about business. But for me, it's a completely creative outlet. Lanny Kravitz vases. Lanny Kravitz. Have you ever seen the inside of his? I don't even know if he's still living there. His Miami home. Oh, my gosh. It's uh, freaky and, and, and contemporary and... And very attractive at the same time. Much like Lenny the man himself. (laughs) Freaky, contemporary, yet attractive. So I know AJ Calloway still has his, uh, you know, from 106 and Park. I know he still has his little stint on Access Hollywood or Entertainment Tonight. But that's not, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's, you might as well have hosted 106 and Park. You got more FaceTime, you know, doing that. Um, and I and yes, I have been informed that um, AJ Calloway from 106 and Park is about to um, open a restaurant in in Brooklyn. Um, Russell Simmons is one of his download partners in this restaurant. Well, how you doing? The, you know my thing about uh, AJ. If you know AJ like I know AJ. Making money is only part of a, a situation for him. AJ likes the spotlight. He's like lights, camera, action, and that little bit of FaceTime he's getting on on extra, and no FaceTime with the restaurant. I don't care if the restaurant turns out and makes a billion dollars a year. Do you know how there's some people like Dame Dash who they would trade half their money to you know get more FaceTime? AJ's like one of those people. So AJ, I wish you well. I I wish you well. Um, I was talking about AJ earlier and saying that um, he he lost his, his the, the sitcom deal that he had, so he will not be a mid season replacement on UPN. Um, well, you know they say that he didn't act so well, and that there was a bit of diva in his attitude, and um, you know I understand the whole whirlwind of leaving 106 and Park, and you know. You know, once you get the people out in Hollywood, you know, under your under your thumb, you think you really got them. And I guess he, you know, a few steps too far and they said, Splaboo, there's the door, you know. So that's OK. AJ will be OK. AJ is the 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 art of the schmooze was invented by AJ Calloway. Make you no um, mistake. <laughs> so. The Cavassier people, uh, Linda Hudson over at Cavassier is saying rappers have certainly played a part in the rise in sales and given it a much younger image, talking about Cavassier. 
The sales have risen more than a third. One of the industry po- spokespeople for the liquor industry says, today U.S. rappers drink cognac as a status symbol. Hmm? Well, what are you going to do? So now we have uh, some telephone calls. Linda is on line number seven. She has a celebrity spotting. I love celebrity spottings. Hi, hey, Linda. Hey, is this Wendy? Yeah. Hey, girl. What's going on? Well, so who did you see, Lynn? Listen, this is big time. I was at a party, mm-hmm. and this party was in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Okay. And I saw... Scarlett Johansson uh-huh. with Josh Hartnett. Wow. At the loft party in the hood, girl, in the ghetto. Wow. I am so serious. Two weekends ago, and I've been trying to call you ever since. Okay, can, I, all right. Uh, there was a blind item that that um, I have, and I don't even know whether I just read it in my head off the paper or whether I read it to you guys on the radio. It was regarding an A-list actress. It, would she be considered A-list? Yes, of course, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. good. It was about an A-list white actress who's got a serious thing for black men. And I couldn't figure out who it was. If Cameron Diaz wasn't taken, I would say Cameron Diaz. Okay, okay. But I, do, was, did she and Josh look like they were really together or like they were playing it off? Were there black men in the party? There were no, you know what? There was, oh. you know, a handful, but okay. it was most hipsters, like, you know, hipsters. the new thing. Yeah. Um, And I don't know if they were together together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They were with two other women, two other young girls that were about their age. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know if they were together, but I was very surprised because at one point, she left the party, I guess to go to the store or something, with another girl, and he stayed. And I don't know, for that neighborhood, oh, yeah. somebody's so famous. I don't know if she left by herself. But, I mean, she came back. She was fine. So. Yeah, yeah, wow. What was she wearing? Oh, she looks very cute. Believe it or not, she has a little nose ring, like, you know. I right saw here. it. It's like that bull. It's like a bull. It's right here in her gristle in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle. It mm-hmm. looks very good. She's gorgeous. She, she is. is. She was wearing jeans. She was wearing a little hat. She looked very pretty, and she was very, very nice. Like, what, was she smoking weed? No, no, no. She, and he wasn't either. But there was, there, there was definitely weed at the party. Yeah, he's a good-looking guy too. His eyes he, are dreamy. He was handsome. Are you he kidding me? So good, and he was so friendly to everybody. Wow. Who was she? Even this one girl didn't know it was her, and went up to her and said, "Oh, you look just like Scarlett Johansson." Wendy, man. My <laughs> oldest brother, he told me he had a very good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. <laughs> It's about that time again. The Wendy Williams Experience is searching for new interns. Come join the Wendy Williams Experience. Fax a cover letter and resume to 866-WENDY-FAX. Broadcast, journalism, mass communication, radio, TV, and film, and music majors only. All applicants must be over 18 years of age. Currently enrolled as a sophomore, junior, or senior in a college or university. Internship hours are 11.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Good luck and thanks for listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, yeah, and if you don't plan on grinding... You can put that where? Back there. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy Wendy Williams. Yes, yes, yes indeed, everybody. E! Entertainment has picked up the third season of The Simple Life with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Yeah. He said uh, yesterday that they are going to shoot 10 episodes of the series and they're going to show it on E! As opposed to it being seen on Fox. I know, I know. Okay, I'll move on. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Pam in Harlem, longtime listener. Pam says, Wendy, Barbara Walters can't be serious. Camila Parker Bowles, she can't be for real. To go to Fanny is the cutest. I'm a big fan of hers. A 40-year-old lady in an 11-year-old body. Dakota Fanny's annoying to me. And I didn't see Barbara Walters' uh, most exciting people because I wasn't interested in... I, I, like, I'm no longer interested in those Barbara Walters interviews. Ever since the Whitney Houston interview, that Diane Sawyer, oh, she's my girl. I rushed to the TV for those. But I didn't care. And I didn't watch. Did you guys watch? Do you guys care? 
I'm just asking. Now, um, yeah, that's a go, by the way. Diana Ross and John Voigt, Angelina Jolie's uh, father. Mm -hmm. He's 66 and she's 61. And uh, she's beside herself with uh, John Voigt at this particular point. I think that's good. Giving her new hope. Let's go to the telephone. We're going blindly. The fax machine's been broken for the past two days. Now it's fixed. And all of a sudden I'm getting like uh, faxes from two days ago and just pouring in. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Welcome to the radio. Hi, Wendy. Hello. Yes. This is Deandra from St. Albans. Nice to have you here. Uh, nice to be here, Wendy. You hurt my feelings last week. What? Yes, what? you did. What I called you for during advice hour. Okay. And you gave me basically advice. I went, I called you. I'm in the mortgage industry and I wanted to know if it was too late for me to go into nursing. And, I, and you told me, well, basically, it's not. And then I asked you about Don's visa. You said, yeah, I'm going to give the next call of the tickets. And I'm like, oh, my God. All my coworkers was listening. Phyllis was hurt. Oh, my, my gosh. Now I'm going through the week of how I've been summoned to jury duty. Oh, no. And I've been going through that from since Monday. And now i got to go back again. I haven't even been questioned yet. What do you Mama want? Mama needs to break out. What? I have been in school and work all year. Mama needs to break out. I understand. I haven't partied. I don't know when. I understand. But I just can't. You know, first of all, I don't have any tickets to give away today. That's number one. And tell me to stop playing that damn music. <laughs> but number two, um, <laughs> I can't just give away when people call up and say that they want tickets. <laughs> Because then that makes it that doesn't make it fair. But let me ask you: Are you on the uh, Murder Inc. trial? No. <laughs> Couldn't be that lucky. No, no, it's not that deep. Yeah, no. not that deep. It's in Queens County. I don't know. Is that in Queens County? I don't know. I, no, I don't know. No, that's in no, Manhattan, in I believe. Queens County Criminal yeah. Court. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. I wish you well with your new career. I didn't know what else to do. What? I called and left a message last week. One of whoever, one of the Lady Fridays, because mm -hmm. I don't want to call them Girl Fridays, Lady Fridays, uh -huh. and was calling to ask if you knew anything about Wentworth Miller. And I don't, other than he's on that show that is really cute, and that the word is he's, um, how you doing? Really? Yeah. And also, jo Joey Lawrence and Wentworth Miller look an awful lot alike now that Joey's on Half and Half. He's got that buzz cut. <laughs> what? Joey looks great. <laughs> I mm -hmm. didn't see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, how you, you're not doing it by numbers. You're not doing it. So, it's like, is this random? Yeah, well, yes, it is random. I'll say, you know, you call now. By the way, my, uh, my friend Jenna Jameson just uh, RSVP today. Okay. Yeah, she's she's she will be in the building with all her porndom. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh boy. Oh wow. Do you okay. watch do you watch porn, you know, Mr. Marcus? Mm, well, you, I prefer to make my own. You love Mary J. Blige and you know she's our host. Yes, I do. Yeah. I sure do. Five hours of open bar, sophisticated. Just keep listening to Wendy. Okay, rub it in, rub it well, in. Well, listen, right. I was going to say, if you prefer to just, you know, call and, 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 and just buy tickets to guarantee that you're in the building, I can give you, what borough are you in, Queens? Yes. All right, this is where you call. You're going to call Hillside Auto Spa. Okay. That's my boy Ron over there. Hey, Ron. Hey, Michelle. Okay, their telephone number in Queens is 718 523 2309. And he's right there on uh, Hillside Avenue. Okay. I'll, I'll make that call. Five, but I'm still going to keep trying. Yeah, 523 2309. Okay. Thank you for calling. All right. Bye bye. Hey, you want to know what, everybody? We've got new family members uh, checking out the show for the first time today. Power 99 in Memphis. Their catchphrase is nonstop hip-hop, boy. Nonstop hip-hop all day long. All right. <laughs> Power 99, Memphis. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be here to serve you all. I hope that you uh, are have been entertained so far during the show. And please... Um, you know, I'm I'm a big pill to swallow, and hopefully, you know, you'll hang around long enough, and you'll really like the show. I, you know, I'm just a girl from New Jersey. Let's take more telephone calls. Hello? 
Hello? Hi. Hi, is this Wendy? Good. Yes, how are you? <laughs> how are you, Wendy? Good. Love you, love you. Thank you. Love you. So listen, I was um, watching the Oprah and the Kirk Franklin yeah, interview. Yeah, me, me and Cheryl Lee Ralph were talking about it last hour. I didn't see it. Go ahead. I wanted to speak to her so bad because I had seen her before she was doing Moesha. Okay. Uh, we're about the same age uh -huh. anyway. Uh -huh. um, listen, uh, they were talking about porn, and he's supposed to be five years free from being addicted to the porn. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with watching porn. Me neither. You know, personally... I mean, now at this point in my life, I say, you know, when you get to a certain age, you don't have to do it anymore. I mean, but young people do it all the time. In my back in the day, yeah, we, you know, we sat around as a group, girls and guys, and watched the whole thing. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. You know, Oprah's acting like I never heard of such a thing. Yeah, you know, how can you be addicted to porn? And uh, she had a doctor there saying, oh, it's a sexual addiction. It's called being, you know, addicted to sex. It's not, not addiction. I, I don't believe it's an addiction. Anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess you could be addicted to it. But I guess. I mean, you can stop it if you want. Sex is sex. You yeah. Know what I'm mm -hmm. You know, and most people find it fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, at my age, I still think it's fun. You know what I'm saying? It is. And if you want to watch it with your mate. Yeah, it's very, it's very entertaining. You know, so I don't, you know, I don't know why it's, you know, he felt so bad about it. You know, I think it's because of his position and he's a, he said he's, you know, the, he's a minister or whatever. Yeah, well, his issues are a lot deeper than porn, but that's what he'll let you believe. So we'll just ride with that one. Yeah. On the strength yeah. of Oprah. And, um, I'm looking forward to your Dons and Divas. I went to the last one last year. You had fun. And it was fun. Let me tell you, I've never been to a party like that. Yes. No, that was my first time. Th this year, the party is at a secret location in Manhattan and uh, the place holds 2,500 people and it is a sex. Sexy, sexy spot. Well, let me tell you, my email is in. Good. I had a response. Good. And I'm, I'll am i be there. Okay? Fabulous. And I'll bring a supermodel with me. Wonderful. Okay. Then I will see you on December 22nd in New York City. Okay, Wendy. Love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How can you beat that five hours open bar all hosted by Mary J. Blige? We're going to have the baddest DJs in the country there. Wait until I tell you who the DJs are. And some of them, well, I don't even want to talk about it, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be wonderful. Um, now, what line is this? Is that line? Yes. That's line number six. That's Laura from Louisiana. She's calling about a little boy in Louisiana whose house was set on fire, and she wants um, to ask about helping him have a better Christmas. How are you, Laura? All right, how are you? Good. Now, um, what part of Louisiana are you calling? Because we're on, uh, we're on in the whole state. Actually, our New Orleans station was washed away. But... I'm calling from Shreveport. Oh, from Shreveport. Okay, there we are on the beat. Shout out to everybody in Shreveport. So, now, what happened with the little boys? What, what happened? Um, his mother is uh, well, 21. Um, I'm not going to put the total information as far as the guy that set the house on fire, but they knew him. Yeah. And um, the parents died, the siblings of the little boy died, mm -hmm. and he's um, when he's discharged from the hospital, he's going home with his grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, his grandmother's 40 years old. She has other kids that she's taken care of, too. Yeah. Um, his name is uh, Zephaniah. He's um, now, have you, four years old. Have you been in touch with the Public Affairs Department at uh, the radio station in Shreveport? Uh, no. Okay, because you know, um, radio stations generally, you know, we we have public affairs de departments. Okay, you know what no, I mean. I didn't know about that. No. Yes, and I'm going to tell you um, in Shreveport. Well, my boss in Shreveport's name is Quinn Eccles. Okay. And uh, I'll give you the radio. Or, well, I don't want to give you. Uh, the only I only have Quinn's cell phone number. He wouldn't like it very much if I gave that. <laughs> but uh, okay. you know, the, the radio station's on two hundred four North Thompson Drive in Shreveport. Yeah, I know where this. And is. you know, it's you ask direct assistance for the telephone number to K B T T. That's okay. the beat. Okay. All right. And I wish you well. Take care, Laura. Thank shout you. out to my other um, Louisiana affiliate radio station, KISS 106. Big shout out to everybody there. And, you know, and a special shout out to my uh, the, my New Orleans radio station, which is in the process of rebuilding, Q93, number one for hip-hop and R&B. Mm -hmm. And, of course, our new radio station in Memphis, Nonstop Hip-Hop, Power 99.
just like in Philly, Power 99. All right. Um. Oh, so uh, the girl who apparently is some sort of high school student who said she made out with Nick Lachey after a high school football game in Ohio back in September. Remember, she went to like the Star and the Inquirer and stuff with the story. Well. Um, she doesn't believe that she's the reason for Nick and Jessica's breakup, but um, she admits that she did. She admits this on Extra, everybody, that she did accept an invitation to Nick Lachey's hotel room. And here's her quote. If you think I'm that kind of girl, I'm not. We hung out and just kissed and that was it. I didn't want it to escalate, she says. She, you know, she looked at him and she's like, you're married. In the meantime, Nick and Jessica don't have a prenuptial agreement. And the funny thing is, is that when they got married, she was the one with the money and the potential for, uh, excuse me, he was the one with the money and the potential supposedly for more money. I mean, uh, the, at the onset of their marriage, he's the one who wanted the prenuptial agreement and he presented her with the papers and she didn't want to sign. And that pushy father of hers and the lawyers going back and forth. She's not signing. She's not signing. She finally, I guess Nick just kind of threw up his hands. They got married anyway. And now that they're getting a divorce, it's not Nick with the money. It's Jessica. I bet she wishes she signed now because now she's going to have to give him half. And guess what? Nick is about to shoot a pilot in April for a show, a sitcom about he'll play a baseball player who's getting adjusted to being newly married. In other words, a newlyweds kind of show. Uh, it's going to be a sitcom, and they're, they they want to pick it up for fall of 2006. So that's just to keep you what's going on with the uh, Nick and Jessica front. Isn't that interesting? Last night I woke up in the morning. You know, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night. At three o'clock in the morning, I wake up. I go to the bathroom, take my son to the bathroom. He's only five, and uh, you know, flip around the channels like I usually do. The Gangsta Hour during the Gangsta Hour on TV, anything is on. And I saw Studio Fifty Four. I love that movie. I love those times. Like I was too young to go to Studio Fifty Four and really do it to death do the damn thing. But I always say, if I could go back in time, I think that's where I was supposed to be. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, it had a story about Blondie, but I'll tell you that. It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. wow. <laughs> the stage is set for this year's WBLS party with a purpose. Just added cameo. Cameo Live. Larry Blackman and Cameo, along with Jaheen. Vivian Green. Sharissa. And Donnell Jones. Dress your best and follow the red carpet into a first-class night of fun in the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown, Saturday night, December 17th. December 17th. Enjoy a full holiday buffet while Chuck Chill Out gets the party started. Chuck Chill Out in full effect. Mix and mingle with your favorite WBLS Air personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. And this is Mark Jordan. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Bob Harper. This is Champagne. This is Hal Jackson. This is the original Rude Boy, David Levy. Along with special invited VIPs. You'll never know who might be in the house. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Sponsored by the New York City Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solutions. Keeping your family in your home and keeping your home in your family. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. Mm -hmm. Today's R&B and Classic Soul, the Wendy Williams Experience. Gearing up for the bonus hour at the top of the hour. Don't forget, the, tonight the place to be is the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience at the Laugh Factory. Mm -hmm. 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. We always have a whole lot of fun. And now the Laugh Factory has the kitchen working for your artichoke dip and your mozzarella sticks and your wings and your pizza and your burgers and your chicken strips and your chicken sandwiches. And, and of course, the best drinks in town and the funniest comedians around. Shout out to Capone, the Gangsta Comedy. Special shout out to my man and yours, Ken Black, and all the comedians that will be coming through tonight. And especially you, my friends. Uh, meet me at the Laugh Factory. Doors open up at 8 o'clock tonight every Wednesday night. 
Except for last Wednesday, because we made it on Thursday night, because we figured you'd need a break after Thanksgiving, and there were lots of people there. It was so much fun. But uh, we're back to Wednesday schedule now. So, And the jokes start at 9 o'clock, so I'll see you at the Laugh Factory tonight, okay? Special shout out to my parents. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Drive safely out there. They're driving into the city. I got them tickets for um, a color purple tonight. Yeah, the official opening is tomorrow night. But, um, you know, they've been having runs, and so they're going, you know, to see Color Purple tonight. I know they were really excited about that. Yeah. I'm going after the first of the year. Are you guys going? Have you gotten your tickets yet? Yeah. Color Purple. Oh, I have to talk with you about Young Jeezy, but I'll wait until our next break. In the meantime, I did want to remind you that... WBLS is proud sponsors of the GED Connection. It, c- connection, excuse me. You get your extra help that you need when you watch the GED Connection on Channel 13. It airs every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 a.m. with a repeat but both days at 12.30 p.m. To find out more about what else is going on with WBLS, you can log on to our website at WBLS.com. Oh, we have a new sponsor. Oh, boy, oh, boy. The sales department, you guys are really getting it now. You're putting in sponsors that I can really, really relate to. This is great. Guess who this hour is sponsored by? Home Goods. Home Goods. That is my once-a-week stop place. What? They open at 9 o'clock, 9.30 in the morning. They get new deliveries of new stuff every day. From your comforters to your bedding. See, all I had to say was this hour sponsored by Home Goods, but I can go into all. I mean, do you home good? I home good. I love that place. The one that I go to is in Wayne, New Jersey, right there in like the same plaza with um, the jeweler um, that, that happens to be one of the sponsors for Don's and Divas, Ben and Eddie at B&B Jewelers. I go to Home Goods, I go to B&B, and then I go next door and I might get a pedicure or something. <laughs> love you, Home Goods. Thank you so much for being a part of the WBLS advertising family. I really, really love you. Spend more money so I can talk about you more. Mm-hmm. Boy, I can really lay it down. They got the best Christmas decorations, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Easter comes around. Where do you go? Oh, Home Goods. And BLS wants to remind you that domestic violence is everybody's business. If you or somebody that you know is being abused, We want you to know you're not alone, and we've got a telephone number where you can seek out shelter, emergency support, that emergency shelter, an emergency phone conversation. Everything is free and confidential and available to you. The telephone number is 1-800-621-HOPE. That's 1-800-621-HOPE. Before we jump to the phone, don't forget tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., excuse me, Steve Harvey is going to begin to talk with us about us. I say us, too, because I'll be listening, because that's how I get the details on the contest, <laughs> through Steve. Um, he's going to talk with us about um, how we can get, how well, now it's you. You can get your hands on $1,000 every hour. Um, but the way to qualify, you probably should qualify first before you even turn on the radio because you're going to be disgusted. It's not one of those just call in and win. You have to sign up for our WBLS e-newsletter. Go to our website and sign up, WBLS.com, and then listen tomorrow morning beginning at 6 a.m. to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, I see that uh, Aaron is on line seven, wants to talk about the Reverend Run Show. Yes, I've seen it. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Uh, very well. Thank you, Aaron. I've seen the Reverend Run show. Okay, my question, I have a, a few questions. Okay. Well, first, let me say this. I relocated to the area about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love your show. I think you're funny as hell. Thank you. And I try to listen to you after work every day. Thank you. Sh- I thought the show was cute. My, my question is, is Joey's wife or Reverend Run, Run's wife as nice as she seems? And the remaining member of his group... How does he live in comparison to in comparison to Reverend Run? Nowhere near. That's right. But you know what? Here's the thing about DMC. The man is happy in his station in life. <laughs> Do you know how there are people like that? Few. That there exactly there are very few people like that. But you have to really admire people like that. And I say this with all due respect to DMC because you know he's a real stand up dude. And shout out to his wife and happy holidays to he and his whole family. Right. You know what? He's happy that he survives. I guess the, the ups and the downs of the hip hop industry. The man had a t- tremendous drinking problem. He was on the brink of death at any given moment. He meets this wonderful woman. They get married. They have children. You know. You know. With his own strength and I guess the 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 
he's supportive of his, of his family. You know, he all he wants is 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 you know what he has, I guess. You know what's funny when I look at that show, what mm. I come away with, yeah, what? Is he's more wealthy with that family than he is with that money. Do you uh, run? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, money is important. We need it to survive. But right. When I look at that show, I, I think he's more blessed with that family than money. Because you also realize, you, you sound, um, Aaron, like a man of a certain age. And as we get older, yeah. we realize that, you know, while money is important, it's not everything. And you see what he's, he's already had his share of groupies, Reverend Run has. Right. And he's already had his share of negroidian expenditures and all that other kind Absolutely. of foolishness. And, and I can appreciate at least that aspect of the show. And that's the reason why I asked the question, because... If he's went through that stage, how did the other remaining, well, the remaining person survive? We know what happened to uh, to uh, the DJ. Well, those two aren't getting along. Uh, last I heard, Ron and, and DMC. So, you know, for as important as family is, you would think that a friendship like that would be important also. But apparently it's not. So. Well, thank you, babe. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, I had an ex-girlfriend that lives in L.A. And she stays up at night listening to you. So oh, she, she loves you to death. on the beat. Yeah. Great. Well, thank okay. you, Aaron, for turning on the show. All right, babe. Have a blessed day. Take holiday. care. Bye-bye. You too. Right, be good. And line number six, Ross is there from Brooklyn. Hey, Ross. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Ross, hey, the, Wendy. Ross, the computer says you've only been listening to the show for about a month, and you didn't like it at first, but now you're devoted. Oh, girl. Honey, you make my day. Thank you, Ross. And I just love that. How you doing? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Artie. <laughs> I love her, too. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all keep up the good work. Hey, Wendy. Yes, Ross. Let me ask you one question. Yes. What time tomorrow are you going to be down on uh, 45th and Broadway? Well, the WBLS family will actually be out there. I'll be here at the studio with all my tools and stuff. Okay. But um, the radio station, you know what? I believe Steve is broadcasting and then Mark is broadcasting. And then the radio station is going to be all day long until 7 o'clock at night. Uh, all from 6 a.m. to uh, 7 p.m. PM. Okay. And we're going to be at the Planet Hollywood right there in Times Square. We are collecting uh, non perishable things, uh, toys, clothing, anything right. that you can possibly think of that's in, of course, good shape. And the toys, don't let them be used toys. Um, for needy families, victims of Hurricane Katrina, these people are about to be kicked out of the hotels that they were relocated from New Orleans to New York, yeah. put in hotels. They're about to be homeless. You know, I mean, if you've got an extra uh, a dollar in your po pocket and a little bit of room in your heart, these families are available for you to adopt and, and you know, your money will be a tax deductible donation and whatnot. So that's going to be going on all day long um, at Planet Hollywood. Okay. okay. And I'm, I'm dying to read your latest book. Oh, well, thank you. I can't, but the I, baby, I'm not going to hold you long. I can't wait to uh, uh, reveal Ritz Harper to the world. June uh, of 2006. Oh, Steve Harvey and Johnny Gill this morning. No! Ooh. What? Ooh. What, did, what did you hear? Uh, they dealt with the rumors okay. about him and Eddie Murphy. Yes. And he clarified a lot of stuff. What did he say? He said they are the best of friends, him, Eddie, and Nicole, and everybody needs to stop throwing in what ain't there. Okay. And we'll go with that. I like Johnny Gill. Yeah, me too. Uh, but I have my own thoughts. But, you know, I like Johnny Gill, and so we're going to go with that. I hear Because if Johnny says it, then it must be so. It must be so. Mm -hmm. Well, love you, darling. Thank you. And you and the family, enjoy the holidays, <laughs> and I'm going to keep on listening. Thank you. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, hit line three real quick. Okay, Ty. Ty. Hello? Ty, my web my website is thewendywilliamsexperience.com. I know that. What? Do, Wendy? Yes, hi. Oh, all right. Two things. When, okay. um, I tried to go on yesterday, and it wasn't working. So I just wanted to know if it was down or anything. They're probably setting up the PayPal for Don's and Divas extravaganza. Because you're going to be able to go to my website and then see all the information, then hit a button and, you know, swipe a credit card or whatever you webbies do to pay for stuff. If if that's what you were trying to do, you can just go to PayPal.com in the meantime and, and get tickets. Okay. Is that what you were calling about? Don't let me uh, push you into anything. No, it's not. I'm okay. definitely interested in that. But the mainly, oh. I was trying to get on your website. I go regularly. Oh. Well, thank you. Um, secondly, secondly, I just want to shout out my lady, Nima. Okay. I love her. All right. 
All right, and we both love your show. You take care. Thank you, Ty. Have All a right. wonderful day. You Look, too, later. I, I need to talk to Kia on line number one. Transsexual, transsexual, transsexual in the wings. Um, Nate, oh, she hung up? Damn. The computer says transsexual messing with a guy who has a girlfriend. Damn. I love the trannies. Shout out to all you all. Ooh, how you doing? How you doing? All right, we need to continue with the break. I want to come back. I want to talk with you guys about Young Jeezy. Um, I think the tranny's on line seven. Oh, you're there? Wendy. Are you the tranny? Yes. How you doing? I'm good. Now, you're messing with a guy who has a girlfriend. Okay, so listen. I messed with this guy like two years ago. Okay, for people who uh, need explanation, a tranny it still has the uh, private part. Yes. But you just tuck. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have implants? No, I have silicone. I had got silicone shot, loose silicone. So I'm like a 38C. So you're a 38C? Just off silicone shots? Yeah. Uh, girls, I don't recommend this. This is a, I, I have a few tranny acquaintances um, that I've made along the way in my career, mm -hmm. and trannies are the only people who deal with these silicone shots to make the breasts. Girls, for you, if you're thinking about enlarging your breasts, I would definitely uh, ask more about the actual implant. Yeah, I'm thinking about saline. Yeah, why didn't you? Uh, why the why the silicone shot? Um, because it was convenient at the time, and I'm I'm only twenty. So and like cheap. I, how how much is a silicone shot? Um, they were 200 a session. Yeah, and how many sessions did you get? I got $1,600 worth. Six, see, $1,600 is the cheap. This is the cheap. This is the knockoff. Yeah, you know, and then you got the silicone in your body. No, mm -mm, but how do, you, how do your breasts feel? Um, they feel good. Actually, they're not even hard. Like, they move around and everything. Yeah, like, well, that's the great thing about that's silicone. That's because I OD'd off of hormone pills to keep them soft and, oh. you know, all that kind of stuff. Did your, wave start, did your waist start to curve in? Oh, yeah, all that. I got that pump, too. I got um, $1,000 in my lower body. I got 600 in my butt, four in my hips. Yeah, to make you to make you uh, curvy like a woman. Uh -huh. So now, when you met your uh, your your jump off the guy with the girlfriend, did he know that you were a man in disguise? No, at first, like he was trying to talk to me. It was an I and I was coming from the bar, and he liked shorty, and so he walked me home, and we were smoking a blunt. So I was like, "Look, dude, I ain't even I ain't even gonna hold you. I'm a dude." Okay. And he was like, "Oh, for real? I'm thrown for a loop." But see, then once we started like you know being intimate with each other, he started liking my. You know what I mean? He wanted me to do him, and I'm like, "So you were a topper for him." Yeah. Well, that means he was already open to begin with. Huh? He's already experienced. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, uh, Goose is telling me I have to wind up. What's your final question to me? Okay, my final question is, like, what should I do? He hangs out with my nephew and his whole squadron. At the corner, really mess with him because, like, if he ever was to say something smart to me, like, why he would... So, so you, then you need to leave him alone. You I mean, think, yes, you need but to... But he is so, like, ooh. Yeah, but he doesn't want you. He wants his girlfriend. You'll always be on the down low. At the end of the day, trannies need love, too. Which is true. And we're going into the Christmas holiday. Do you always want to be somebody's down low, or do you... No, it ain't even it, because, like, I've really been chilling, like, this summer, but I'm about to start going to the Art Institute. I'm trying to get my... There you go. You got to stop cursing, but there you go. But he's so sexy, Wendy. He's, well, like, extra sexy, you, like... You sound sexy, too sexy. I'm all right. <laughs> well, you know, you sound sexy. What do you do with your hair? You weave it? You do a wig? What do you do? Oh, yeah, I'm doing a weave right now. Yeah, how, eight, lo how long is it? Eight, I'm doing an 18 inch. I was feeling very dragon. Love yeah. the 18 inch. I'm so in. Yes. Yeah, so what color are you doing? I'm doing plum. I'm trying to get my punk rock on. I have one of these little pants out of hot topics with the little chains and all that on it. Yeah, I mean, you sound freaky and, and cool. Leave him, <laughs> leave him alone. Too much drama. Oh, my God, Wendy, look, I'm going to be real famous. Like, I'm going to be just like you. I love you. You are, like, the best thing, like, since everything. Well, I love you. Thank you for listening. And how you doing? And I have to go. <laughs> how you doing? All right, All right Wendy. Bye-bye. Okay. Nonstop till 7 o'clock. It's the experience on BLS. <laughs> Hi, I'm the Reverend Al Shopton. This is Chuck D, Public Enemy, number one. What's up? This is Barack Obama, and you are listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Gosh, I had all through the music and commercials, and as soon as the microphone opens, I decide to cough. I'm sorry. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. We're about to get out of here. Um, I want to thank, first of all, Cheryl Lee Ralph for coming through today. And um, she's just a wonderful, wonderful woman and, and friend to the show. I love her. Also, I want to welcome Power 99 in Memphis. Nonstop hip-hop, boy! 
This is our first day together. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed what you've heard thus far. If you have any questions uh, for me or you want to curse me out or you want to say, damn, we're not used to this here in Memphis or anything. um, Look, I welcome any and all criticism. There's nothing you can say to me that hasn't already been said. So we'll just start with that. okay? Um, And we're going to work together. I want to make you love me. (laughs) Memphis. You can email me, Wendy, at thewendywilliamsexperience.com. And I want to shout out to Judy Ellis. Judy, it's always been about respect and business. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your radio station in Memphis. Um, special shout out to you too, Alan. It's, uh, it's nice working together again. Yeah. Anyway, um, Young Jeezy, everybody. And his former girlfriend have finally reached, well, a temporary agreement with their ongoing child support issue. Young Jeezy, uh, at this point, you know, in my top five favorite CDs in my car, I just bang it to death. He's got a nine-year-old son. And, um, you know, up until just a minute ago, he was only paying $178 a month in child support. And that was, ba- well, that was ordered back in 2001. And that was based on an, a reported income of $89.30 per month. He wasn't just poor. He was po. At least that's what he's claiming. Of course, you know, you don't declare yam flipping. Easy. <laughs> well... Jeezy's attorney came forward and said that, that um, excuse me, the baby's mother's attorney came forward and said that, you know, she's living in poverty in a rural HUD project in Georgia and um, went on to say that, you know, and here's Mr. Jenkins, that's Jeezy's real name, rising, you know, high on the billboard charts, yada, yada, yada. He's got this mansion in Atlanta, living the high style tour in the country, in the world, keeping close company with Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, doggone it, he can definitely afford to pay more than $178 a month now. A recent filed affidavit on Jay-Z's financial uh, situation says that his income is approximately $15,000 a month, everybody, with a $300,000 cash stash in the bank. And $50,000 in jewelry. That's underestimated, that jewelry thing. Um, and if he has the yam still out there, then so is the $15,000 a month. And to, to hear the way he talks on his CD, you know, I think he's still balancing both. That's just me talking. In the meantime, um, I don't know the, the terms of the temporary support, but... He's been found out. There's there's money. And where there's money here, that means there's more money. So I I wish his baby's mother well. I hope she's not one of these foul broads. I hate sticking up for a foul broad. You know what I mean? Just doing it off the strength of being a woman. You know. But I damn sure know that even if she's foul, $178 a month is not correct. How about um how about that uh Michael Irvin, everybody? We never talked about him in a group session. We talked about him the other day. Dennis Rodman was here, I skirted over it. And the crack pipe was found in his car. They said it was the car of a friend of 17 years who who, who had just left a rehab in Houston, came over to Michael Irving's house for Thanksgiving. Michael Irving saw that he looked a little bit twisted out, patted him down in his pockets. He found the crack pipe. As opposed to Michael Irving throwing it away in the master suite bedroom, you know, garbage, in a whole bunch of, you know, foot locker bags or something like that, stuffed inside National Enquirer, and then you dump that down in a Sprite can. Come on, you know there's many ways to... Michael Irving takes it out to his car, he says, because he doesn't want the crack pipe to be in the same house as his precious kids. Exactly. Well, you know, I would talk more in depth, but I suddenly feel as though I'm in mixed company. My parents are in the traffic, and they are definitely zoned in on the show right now. So I'm not going to talk, but all I'm saying is, likely story, Michael Irving. If you're still smoking crack, then, you know, that's one thing. But to give us this whole thing, you know. Here's his quote. I know the type of demons... Uh, wait, it's a situation that is not as it seems, he says. Um, I know the type of demons. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, I feel like I'm rushed. I don't even want to rush if I have to finish, finish a story that way. Anyway, 
I say likely story. Terrence Howard is uh, getting a divorce. It's reported that he has joined the ranks with Morris Chestnut. Splitsville Lane, according to the New York Post. Terrence Howard has left his, his wife of 14 years. Well, Howard Terrence is reportedly dating Mark Anthony's ex-wife, Diana Torres Delgado. Well, you know, he's famous now. So that, the, you know, the code word for black men, anybody but black, you know, so he's with Diana Torres. Oh. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. We can let that marinate for 24 hours, talk about it again tomorrow. Because I also wanted to spread to you that Kimberly Stewart's engagement is off to the Laguna Beach uh, dude, Talon. Do you watch Laguna Beach? Crystal, you watch Laguna Beach? Do you know who t this Talon is? He's only 19. Kimberly Stewart is 26 years old. And, and we, we already predicted that the wedding was, you know, the engagement was just for show. So now the engagement is off. So we can put that where right there. Uh-oh. That's my walking music. Time for me to go, go, go. Hit the dough. I love you for listening today. God willing, we'll be together again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. She's part of me, boy. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. It, wait a minute, Goose. Hit line number one. Derek is there. Oh, no, Derek hung up. The answer to your question, Derek, is I would have until I became a mother. And now, no, I wouldn't. But I could never say never. He's talking about posing. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, Derek, though. All right. Well, you know, your phone calls are always welcome during the bonus hour. Oh, mixed company, mixed company. I mean, I would never do something like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, the crows are listening. I would never do that. What are you, crazy? <laughs> you out of your mind, Derek? <laughs> um, everybody keep it where you've got it. I'll review the events of the day with you, and we'll take your phone calls. And, you know, we always have such a good time on the bonus hour. I got all kind of crazy stories to review with you. We can talk about Michael Irving. More if you want. I wanted to talk with you about George Michael. I wanted to talk with you about um, oh, Whoopi Goldberg and Lucy Liu. Um, I got a couple of crazy stories going on. Let me see if I can tease you real quick. Oh, Michael Jackson. We can talk about him and his ex-wife if you want. Gregory Peck. I wanted to talk with you about him. Donald Trump. Um, the mother that put bleach in the macaroni. <gasps> Another way to kill somebody. You see, I love these recipes. I mean, this is terrible. What a sad state of affairs. I wanted to talk with you about Mick Jagger's ex, Jerry Hall. Uh, I got a few advice letters. I'm going to take your phone calls. I'll give you more details on Dons and Divas. We'll talk about DMX and, and Regis uh, quit. Well, we'll talk about... Yes, that's what the bonus hour is for. The bonus hour is next of the Wendy Williams experience on 107.5 WBLS. Then on UPN 9 News at 10, a tap, a bump... On an escalator, in the dressing room, innocent enough, you're distracted before you notice. <gasps> Your purse is gone. You've been robbed. Pickpockets and petty thieves. This holiday season, they're out there looking for their next victim. Are you prepared? Their tricks and techniques exposed. The I-Team investigates tonight on UPN 9 News at 10. What's up? 107.5 WBLS, New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call the number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotke talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year, on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy's guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh, my Lord. Have I ready for this day? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? 
How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Okay. I was just trying to um, get the details for tomorrow. It's a big to-do. The phone lines are in. The radio frequencies are set up in the microphones over at the Planet Hollywood. And Trev Hollywood, who happened, he's not related to Planet Hollywood. <laughs> if you were, would you still work this job out of the joy of the game? Of or would course. you buy the radio station? Not buy the station, but I'll keep this show. Yeah. And would you work the show? I mean, because you seem to enjoy what you do. Yeah, even if I won the lottery, yeah, I'll still come. Yeah. Because you enjoy putting together this the creative thing that you do. Yeah. And you do it very well, Trev. Thank you. So now you've just come from our general manager's office, Dion Levingston, mm -hmm. who's the best. Hey, Dion. And Dion says that we're going to be broadcasting for the whole five hours from Planet Hollywood this show. Uh, the other shows are also, you know, Steve and then Mark. But I was just, uh, you know, in a quandary, a quagmire, if you will. Hey, star. Uh, but I'm supposed to be... All right, so we're going to be set up for two, from 2 to 7. 2 to 7, the whole bonus hour and everything. The bonus hour and everything. Wow. Now, so there's going to be a... Um, they're, going to fall, they're going to just fax you know, on the normal number that they use every day? Okay, I'll have a fax machine set up. That was Dion's brilliant idea because, you know, I am so quirky. I am so crazy. I, I don't want to broadcast from any place. How do I get my faxes and maintain you know, conversation with my people? Yeah, they can still call. They can still fax it. But Everything is as normal. Dion did all that behind my back. I didn't know yeah. that he was, you know, he knows I'm anal like that. It's a slick stuff. Yeah. But, but I like that, you know, we have a really proactive general manager. He really understands the needs of individuals here. So I'll be able to get my faxes and no I'll be problem. able to get my phone calls. No. And you guys can stop by and drop off um, non-perishable um, things and food and clothing and, and, and whatnot and help out the victims. They're about to get kicked out of these um, these hotels that they were sent here, you know, from New Orleans. And the, 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 the hotel stay is about to be up. They're going to turn the lights off. That's it. Wow. Homeless. So if you even have it in your heart, you can go a step further than everybody and adopt a full family. So now, how are the affiliates? You know, we have our new radio station we're on in Memphis now. Power 99, nonstop hip-hop. And, and the other radio stations that we do. Well, how's that going to work? Yeah. They're going to um, gonna hear the broadcast? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, they're here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, it's a national thing or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, they know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hurricane Katrina. Oh, that's right. It's national. Yeah. Of course. Silly it's man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Jim Weiner earlier on, we were working on. Yes, Jim. Jim, that's that's our man. All right, so stop by uh, Planet Hollywood and say hello to any one of us. Steve in the morning, Mark in the middays, me in the afternoon. I'm there from two to the whole seven o'clock, two to seven. Planet Hollywood. Where is it? Forty fifth. It's in Times Square. Times Square. Yeah. It's crossroads to the universe. Uh, Dion said something about if you donate something or another, then you'll get a copy, a free copy of the Wendy Williams Experience, Queen of Radio, by New York Times bestselling author Wendy Williams. So, there's there's going to be books. I'll bring some experience T-shirts. Why not? We'll make a little prize closet there. You know, as an incentive. It's that time of year anyway. It'll make your heart feel great. Let's go to line number one. Nicole's on, and she wants to talk about Terrence Howard. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Good. Listen, um, I just want to give you a little FYI, because I love for you to have all your facts together. Mm -hmm. Terrence Howard was married to a Jewish woman. He was on The View um, okay. a couple months back, mm -hmm. and they showed her, and they showed his kids. Now, I've actually seen him in person, mm -hmm. and I saw his kids. They are definitely mixed. Mm -hmm. um, but he likes everything that's light skin mm -hmm. and or white. Mm -hmm. so um, when I when I saw him, because um, he's a Jehovah's well, he was a Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. and I saw him at one of our conventions. And if he wasn't with his churn, the from, from the look he gave, and you know what look I'm talking about, uh -huh. it was one of those, you know, less, you know, it's on and popping. If my kids weren't here, 
Wow. Yeah, so I was just like, okay. And so then when I saw the jewels, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Now, my girlfriend, she used to work at a gym up in uh, Conchahokan in Philly. Mm-hmm. And he worked out there. I, I want to say it's Gold Gym, but I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But um, he was hitting on this little 19, I think she's like 18 or 19, little uh, white girl. Mm-hmm. Trying to take her, you know, this and that, this and that. When mm-hmm. she found out she, uh, that he was married, and but he, that, didn't, that didn't stop her. So. Well, well, yeah. Well, you know. So. Yeah. But anyway, hey, Wendy, I just want to let you know, I saw you a couple years back in Philly. Mm-hmm. You were at a um, some function in, in, uh, at Temple. It was like a women in the industry thing mm-hmm. at Temple University. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you walked in, you were running late. And when you walked in, everyone gave you such like, you know, oh, you know, sucking teeth and everything. They did? Yeah. yeah. And I was upset because I was like, you know what? She's a person, you guys. Just because, you know, her life is maybe public because she's on the radio. That's not nice. No, but no. I guess they suck their teeth because I talk about people. So it's yeah, like... There she go. And, and, and that's what you do. Yeah. And that's what has made you famous. And that has what made people love you or hate you. But the disrespect is uncalled for. Did that look like it affected my swagger as I walked in? Absolutely not. Yeah. I try to face You know what forward. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, go ahead, Wendy. But, and I wanted to meet you at the end. But it was one of those things where it was like all those same people who were hating on you walked up and were like, Wendy, Wendy. Wow. So I just, I said, you know what? If I'm supposed to meet her, I'll meet her at another time in life. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I appreciate you listening, to call. Well, no problem. Just wanted to give you an FYI so that you knew. Okay. Well, thank you. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And now line number six does not, not want to give a name, but the per- hello? Hello? You have a friend who recently left her husband for another woman. Yes. Wow. So you have a lot to digest. Did you know that your friend was a lesbian all along? Um, I had an idea she was. How long have you been friends with her? Uh, I've been friends with her since our daughters were two. And how old, how long is that? Uh, I don't know how old the daughters 13 are. Thirteen years. Wow. Thirteen years. So in thirteen years, you never just said, "Hey, girl, do you like girl?" Does that mean you never said anything? No, I never said anything. But um, and I kind I of think be. that her husband might have been also. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is, is is forgetting about. Forgetting about that, they moved into a house together, these two women. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that the woman that she's with is just along for the ride or if she's really there just as, you know, because she wasn't happy in her marriage or what her reasoning was. Mm -hmm. But um, the problem, and I'm I'm having two problems. The problem I'm having is that the daughter, the middle daughter of my friend, Mm -hmm. who's the same age as my daughter, Mm -hmm. um... Supposedly, there's pictures on the internet of her naked. She's 15 years old. Okay. So. And I'm kind of estranged from my friend mm-hmm. because I don't really like her, this person that she's with because I'm kind of unsure of her intentions. It's not a lesbian I, thing. It's an intention thing. Right. You. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm afraid of my friend getting hurt. Yeah. Um, my friend is definitely a lesbian, mm-hmm. but this one other woman, I'm not sure, so sure she is. So I'm afraid that if I tell my, and, and I'm not so sure that my friend doesn't know and just has her eyes closed to it. Wait, can I just ask you, mm-hmm. are you, is your friend having sex with this woman? Do they share a bedroom? Oh, they, they, yeah, they live together. They, yeah. brought, they brought both of their families in one home household together. Interesting. Like yours, mine, and ours. So, what, what, so what's your question to me? Should I tell my friend about her daughter? Yeah. Yeah? You know why? Because normally I say stay out of grown folks' business, but this is not grown folks. This is a kid. No, right. This is a kid that I know since she's two years and, old. And your kid is friends with her? Well, they're not friends anymore because they go to different schools. And they're not friends anymore because my daughter kind of doesn't go down the same path you know as what daughter. great so then you have nothing to lose to tell your your friend about her daughter <clears throat> you know this is a minor and right. she does need to know and um you have nothing to lose she might slam the door in your face oh well you got it right. off your conscience you shared it with her right now the other thing is one of the significant others children is going around school saying that his mother is not a lesbian that she is just with this woman because it's a relationship. Stay out of that part. Stay out of that part. Yeah, stay out of that yeah. part. Mm-hmm. Just tell her about her daughter. Mm-hmm. Stick to the facts. Right. As, and, you, as you know them. And there is a chance that I could lose this friend altogether, right? Yeah, sure. Right. But but you're you're mentally prepared. Right. Right, okay. Well, I haven't had that much of a relationship with her anyway since Very she's well. taken on this new one. So. Very well. I just want to tell you that I love your show, and I'm not your typical listener, but I do love your show, and uh, I... Uh, I look forward to listening to every day. What is not typical about you? 
Um, You're white. I'm white, Long Island, <laughs> suburban. Uh, but I have tons of white listeners. Okay. I myself am from the suburbs of New Jersey, which okay. has often been compared to the suburbs of Long Island. What's your well, age? I, have to, I what? have to tell you that when I sit in the car with my kids, I have two kids, <laughs> and they sit in the car with their iPods while I listen to you. Oh, wonderful. Hey, <laughs> what's your age range? Um, I'm... Uh, well, what, I'm between 40 and 45. We're peers. What? We're, we are peers, me and you. Yes. We're so mother- my children are older. We're peers. We're mothers. Yes. We're suburban girls. Yes. We're uh, New Yorkers in the, in the same. Yes. And we're trying to navigate our way through life. We're sisters. Yes. And you want to know how I found out about the internet bit? How? I like this one. I happened to have gone on one of my children's website Uh-oh. and happened to have read something on his one of their I don't want to say his or hers mm. website and found and and found out that that this was going on. Wow! So you'd be happy to know about that because I am a little bit of a snoop, but a snoop in a good way. Yeah, snoop to keep your eyes on your kids. Oh, without a doubt. Sure. All right, mom. Okay, you take care, and I love you. Happy holidays. I love you, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Matthew Knowles, everybody, is, uh, that's Beyonce's father and uh, the significant man in Kelly's life, father. (laughs) Um, And his music world entertainment empire, they're holding open auditions to fill one of the remaining slots for his all R&B male group called Mason Road. They have already inked their deal with Matthew Knowles company for worldwide distribution now write this down i'm going to give you the details i'll get if you are a male or you are the mother or father aunt or or friend of a male who can sing and get along with other males for an r&b group saturday's the audition i'm going to give you a moment to get your pen and paper and write it down i'm going to give you a moment go ahead go 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 ahead let's go to line number seven tanisha's there Hey Tanisha, you want to comment about Johnny Gill? Yeah, Wendy, I was um, I was watch. I mean, I'm sorry, I was listening to Steve this morning and Johnny Gill. He, you know, he said Johnny Gill was gonna be on there, mm. and he called in and he was just, you know, making references to like, no, we're just friends, and I'm friends with his wife, and I'm like, I- I'm torn because I like Johnny Gill, but mm. I'm like, is he gay? I'm confused because <laughs> it's like, and then he goes, well. It was pictures going on the internet, and, mm-hmm. and I actually got the email. I saw the one where it was like him and Johnny, um, him and um, Eddie Murphy are like coming down the steps out of some club, mm-hmm. and he said that it was him. They both were with other women, mm-hmm. so he's saying that they weren't together. And he's like, whoever did that did a great job. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, what do you think? I think whatever Johnny says, I'm going to go along with because I really like Johnny Gill. But but my my belief is not what Johnny says. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, but I'm riding with Johnny because I enjoy New Edition. I enjoy Johnny Gill. He's got incredible sex appeal. And an incredible yes. smile. Incredibly smooth. He is so damn sexy <laughs> that you just don't even care. That's true. But then it's like I was talking to the girls at work and I had everybody listen. I'm like, they're like, you're being soft and pink right now. You're not even thinking about, is he gay or is he not gay? Because there's been so many... He's not your man. Who really cares? You know what I'm saying? You're acting like you're debating because he asked you out for another day. Who cares? You're right. I have another comment. I have a question. Okay. I have a daughter and she's five and I always listen to you talk about your son. And I'm just like, is he like changing now that he's five? Mm-hmm. Like his, his language and stuff? Mm-hmm. Because my daughter is so grown. Yes. It's like, I just want to do things that I can't say on the radio. Yes. But. She, um, he is, he, his language has changed in terms of the words that he uses and he knows the correct way to use them. And I'm right. not talking about four letter words or, or scandalous words, sexual oh, no, words. No, no. I'm just talking about the, the conversations. You know, mm-hmm. come, come here, mommy. I want to talk to you in private. Yes. You know, he pulled me aside on Thanksgiving Day, you know, pulled me away from everybody. He said, I want to talk to you in private. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, he, yes, he is. But you know what? It, I, I like it. It's charming. It's, it's, really, um, it's really wonderful seeing the kids grow up and, and how they change from one year to the next. And, you know. Yeah, it's great. Like, she calls me at work like, Mommy, I love you. Don't forget, come home. I'm like, okay. Yes, yes. Great. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it's good. I, I just want to say I love your show. I've, I've met you a couple times at book signings and things like that, and I spoke to you a couple of times. Well, thank Keep you. Keep up for- the good work. 
Thank- Keep gossiping because I can't live without it. Thank you very much. I will. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Now, uh, look, Mr. Choir Boy. Now, I'm going to say this one time, and I thought I gave you sufficient enough time to get your pen and paper. The auditions are taking place this coming Saturday, December 3rd, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning in Houston, Texas. Hey, listen, I know this is New York Tri-State. You want it? Buy a ticket. You want it? Chase it. If you really want it, you will be there. That's all. Right, Goose? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to give you the address. Here we go. You're going to be in Houston, Texas, starting at 8 a.m. for auditions. 1505 Hadley Street, H-A-D-L-E-Y Street in Houston, Texas. Sounds like you're going to pull it right up to Matthew Knowles' jump-off spot and, <laughs> and, and, and audition there in his living room. What the hell? 1505 Hadley Street in Houston, Texas. The zip code is 77002. The first 300 eligible candidates lined up at Hadley Street, there's apparently some sort of campus there, will be assigned an audition number and a 30-second performance slot for a panel of judges. 30 seconds? What the hell? If you can't put it down in 30 seconds, homeboy, you might as well get get back on the plane and go right back to Rockaway. The first 300 people. <clears throat> You're going to be handpicked and judged by Matthew Knowles and one of the, the one of the Matthew Knowles music group general managers, Jahan, a 15 year veteran, and 20. And um, you're going to also be judged by uh, 20 males. Wait, wait, what is this? <laughs> oh. The 20 really good males will advance to the second round, which will be on Sunday, December 4th. So, see, this is worth it because you'll be in Houston the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. If you're one of the top 20, you go back on Sunday the 4th. Let me see what else it says. After day two, 10 contenders will be selected to continue to round three, which consists of a two-week boot camp of vocal training, fitness, and choreography. Candidates must be prepared with a complete resume and background history, an 8 by 10 photo, and be prepared to perform one of the following songs. Are you ready, homeboy? In My Bed by Drew Hill and One Last Cry by Brian McKnight. I've got a website for further details and telephone number, and then I'm going to throw this information away. I'm, I've got to throw it away. i got to throw it away after this. Are you ready? 713-289-5710. Now I'm going to speed it up. 718 718- Two eight nine five seven one zero, or log on to www. My Dar Inc. M Y Dar as in gay Dar D A R Inc. I N C. M-Y-D-A-R-I-N-C dot com slash Mason Road. Okay. Good luck. If you get in this group, make sure that you can convince uh, Mr. Knowles to let you all come up here and have an interview. (sighs) Lordy, lordy, lordy. John Amos is reeling from a bizarre shooting. This is uh, James from Good Times. This is from The Globe. Oh, shush your mouth. I believe it. Somebody sent it to me in the copy, but you know me. I love the tabloids. So let me just open my actual copy of the Vogue. I mean, the Globe. What page would this be? Oh, I need some glasses. I got to keep my New Year's resolution. What the hell is this? Page 11. Hold on. I'm not going to get a chance to get to everything that I wanted to today. I'm disgusted. That's okay. We have tomorrow. You can come see me do it live. Come to the Planet Hollywood. 
while I'm doing my breaks, I can't do much talking and socializing. There's really not much to see. I just sit here and read my magazine and I put clear on my nails, you know, and I rearrange my hair a lot and I might put on some lipstick. But you might want to come and, you know, drop off non-perishables. You have a little something to eat and stare at the process as it goes down. I bring all my magazines. I spread them all out. Okay, here's the deal with the shooting. Oh, my gosh. John Amos. Jeez, this is James from Good Times. Actor John Amos is reeling in shock after a horrifying incident in which his daughter narrowly escaped being shot to death by an off-duty female cop she claims was her lesbian lover. Now, there's a few different buttons to push there. That one, the gunshot, the how you doing. I mean, just, you know, this is amazing. She looks mixed. Oh. John Amos likes the white women. She's an older daughter. How old is is his daughter? All right, shut up, Wendy. Just read. Okay. I'm still terrified and my father's a wreck, says Shannon Amos. She's a producer. As soon as he heard, he ordered up a private security detail for me. So far, it's costed him $50,000. Look at James with his money sitting on Zoo. This whole ordeal has been a nightmare. On August 30th, the incident occurred at Shannon's Inglewood, California home. Three shots were fired into a window by an off-duty LAPD officer, Keely Coleman. Oh, Keely's in love. If I can't have her, no one can. Yeah, one of them ooh, lover situations. Keely is a 13-year veteran of the LAPD, and she surrendered to the Inglewood police the next day. Now she faces 23 years in prison if convicted on the felony charge of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and a single felony account of shooting at an... Uh, at a dwelling. Police say Officer Coleman fired into the front window of the home at least three times, frightening Miss Amos and her companion. Oh, she was already in there with another lover. Inside, Miss Amos and her companion dropped to the floor. Oh, this is high drama. Damn, damn, damn. According to a release issued by the L.A. County District Attorney's Office. Motive for the shooting was not publicly disclosed. We don't need it to be. I think we figured this out. But let's let's read further. Shannon was slightly injured by splinters of plaster after the three shots exploded. Her friend Ronald Gaines, see what we assumed? Shannon was in there with a, with a man. She's not committed to that officer. Fall back. It was just a dabblation. As a woman, you can do a dabblation. Man, as soon as you dabble, forget about it. All right? No dabbling. She just wanted to take a walk on the wild side, maybe, with you, officer. Fall back. She was in there with her friend Ronald Gaines, and they were both unharmed. I was sitting in my living room with my ex-boyfriend... Oh, see, here's her quote. See, here's, hold on. Here's her quote. Drama. <laughs> I was sitting in the living room with my ex-boyfriend who was helping me set up my stereo system. Suddenly, we heard this loud bang as a bullet whizzed past my forehead and hit the fireplace behind me. There was another blast as a shot hit just inches away from my friend. And then a third. We dropped to the floor. Shannon says she and... Officer Coleman had just ended a romantic relationship. Oh, wow. Shannon's all confused. She was with her. She's, she's with her. Oh, wow. Just ended a romantic. I like her being forthright with it. I, we don't even have to read between the line, lines. I love honest people like this. Mm, let's finish. This is John Amos. Uh, if you're just turning on your radio from Good Times. Hey, Hollywood. John Amos's uh, bisexual daughter. Yeah, her had, yeah, I haven't finished the story. She got shot up, right? No, she didn't get shot up. Oh, she What is that? Your cell phone is too close to the microphone. That's Dominique from Brownsville. Dominique, yeah, when your cell phone gets too close to the microphone, that happens. You just started working here about two months ago? It is what it is, Dominique. You're in. You're on the show. 
That's because I remember your name. Okay, that's good then. Yeah. Brooklyn attitude, right? Yeah, she does. <laughs> but not just the Brooklyn attitude, the Brownsville attitude. What? Ooh, she's about to knife you. Look at her face. Look, exactly. Mmm. <laughs> Is, is it is is that counterfeit? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out to the bill. Every once in a while, you know, you especially in this business, you know, you get some money and you see a wankster bill, you take it right to the bank. Uh, can you test this? <laughs> don't talk, don't call the cops. Just test this before I pass it at a business. You know, take it right to the bank. Shannon says Officer Coleman and she had just ended their romantic relationship. I met her on Match.com. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I met her on Match.com and we became friends. Eventually, it became an intimate relationship. But later, she became incredibly possessive. She interrogated me about men. She went through my things without my permission. At one point, I told her we should be friends, but she refused. Shannon Amos says... That at the time of the shooting, she was unaware of Officer Coleman's involvement and, in fact, even called her for help during the investigation. Oh, my gosh. You know, Shannon, a big part of your problem is, is that you can't just let go of a damn relationship. You got your ex-man over there fixing your stereo. You're calling your ex-broad over to help you because there's somebody shooting in the window. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> goodbye means goodbye. Why don't people understand that? There's no kids involved. Goodbye is good damn bye. That is the only way that you, uh, Crystal, that's the only way you rid your life yes. of the previous situation. Yes. The only complicating factor needs to be if you have kids. If you say goodbye to the man, I don't care how well he puts together that IKEA furniture. Put that where? <laughs> Back there. Goodbye. If you were dating a cop and all of a sudden there's trouble at your home, figure out what else. Don't call your ex for that. You're sending mixed signals. Help means don't forget the condoms. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm a woman and I'm saying that. You know what I mean? When you say help to somebody, that clearly means don't forget the condoms. If you're calling an ex... And it's a weird time of day or night. That means don't forget them. Help me change my tire. I know we're broken up. Don't forget the condoms. Somebody turned off my Woody button. I was just about to go into a skit for you all. What is that? When we hook up with remotes, we can't play Woody? And when somebody holds their cell phone too close to the microphone, we get feedback. <laughs> And if I'm talking on the phone to listeners, then I can't talk to my boss on the si on the other line. Oh, there's the warm line ringing. Uh oh. You know there was too much stuff working at one time. <laughs> yeah, there's too much going on at one time. But at least nothing is smoking. All right, let me finish with the um, with the um, story. Everybody dates on the internet though, but you got to watch these killers. Now look, a, a cop turned out to be the killer. Okay, look. Shannon says at the time, she, okay. But I got suspicious when she started asking too many questions about witnesses and what the cops had said. Later, a neighbor told me that he saw an explorer drive away after the shooting and it was then realized that it was Keeley. This is Officer Keeley. After that, she called me at work to confess. Shannon's dad, John, shot to fame in the 70s playing, okay, Gordon the Weatherman on the Mary Tyler Moore show, and then James on Good Times, yada, yada. Shannon is one of his two oldest children. She's a former segment producer for America's Most Wanted and produced The Watermelon Heist, a film directed by her brother, Kelly, and starring her father. John is worried and going crazy. And of course. By the way, I know you're wondering what Keeley's nose looks like. The same strong Evan's nose. Yeah, yeah, I know you're wondering. Look at Keeley's nose. Yeah. Same strong. McDougal nose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's that story. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> 
Mm, no, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm excited. I got so many facts, it's ridiculous. I'm so looking forward to going to the Laugh Factory tonight. I'm going to try the artichoke dip. I'm going to blow through everything on that menu, but I just have to do it, you know, one Wednesday at a time. I don't want to gain all that weight. And I got it. I want, I love mozzarella sticks, but I'm, I'm going to have those when I know on Thursday morning I got a colonic set up. Because all that cheese will bind me. And I just, you know, eat all that mozzarella on a Wednesday night and then she'll take it out of me on Thursday morning. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight I think I'm going to have the artichoke dip. Maybe a cheeseburger. And then the apple martinis, 90 calories. Well, call me what you want. I have to wait until Friday, and then I'll get it taken out. Friday morning, I get that. <laughs> All right, when we come back, um, you know, I never went over the people poll quest, uh, question of the day. I'm going to save it for tomorrow. I'm not going to do it today, Goose. It's, I mean, it's a, little, it's a little late in the day for the people poll question. All right. A man had sex with a horse, and a woman put bleach on the macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Now, we're going to address both issues and your telephone calls, plus Rosario Dawson. Um, uh, you know, your phone calls will probably incite a lot of uh, conversation, so I'm just going to leave it up to you. 866-GET-WENDY will break, and we'll be back with the remainder of the bonus hour next on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. It ain't over yet. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. <laughs> Listen to what the winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win tomorrow morning beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. One oh seven point five. The one and only WBLS. Yo, peace, y'all. This is Common, and you listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Y'all stay in tune, all right? Love. Okay. All right, let me just catch you up to speed with a few things that are going on. Now, the first thing I wanted to tell you is that Michael Jackson's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, admitted in a newspaper in Ireland what we've all pretty much known forever, and that is the kids aren't Michael's biological kids. Well, you've seen Prince Michael Jr. and Paris, the blonde hair, and you know they're white kids. They're white kids. Um... This is what Debbie Rowe says. Michael knows the truth, and he's not the natural father of Prince Michael Jr. and Paris. He has to come clean. I have no information whatsoever about the identity of the semen donor. The semen was obtained anonymously from a semen bank under an agreement of confidentiality. So that's that. So Michael's not the father. And Whoopi Goldberg and Lucy Liu and Quincy Jones um, all lit the UNICEF Crystal Snowflake uh, the other day in New York. It was handcrafted featuring 16,000 Baccarat crystals. Fabulous. It's that time of the year. Quincy Jones received the UNICEF Spirit of Compassion Award for his long time. Um, activism in philanthropic ways. And all the festivities happened at the Waldorf Astoria. Very nice. Oh, did I tell you this? On Monday, you know that uh, black tie <clears throat> AIDS fundraiser that I'm co-chairing? You know, remember I was telling you $25,000 for the most expensive table. The cheapest individual ticket in the house is $500. We are raising money to um, help combat AIDS, HIV, raise awareness, blah, blah, blah. Kenneth Cole, the shoe designer, and I are, are um, co-chairs, along with uh, two other people. Um, and Harry Belafonte will be giving Kenneth Cole the Humanitarian Award. So Harry Belafonte will be there on Monday also. It's, it's going to be big. It's going to be wonderful. I can't wait. The Lighthouse of Chelsea Pier. The food's going to be great. We've worked very hard to put this together. <clears throat> and it's just going to be a wonderful event. As a matter of fact, I have, I'm going to give you a quick telephone number and a website if you would love to join us. You know, I mean, we'll all be there, all sophisticated. 
It's um, the Choose Life. It's first of all, it's the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. They're having their big gala. And this is called the Choose Life Award Presentation. And Kenneth Cole um, is getting the Choose Life Award. And it's going to be presented to him by the legendary Harry Belafonte. And I'm co-chairing this event along with um, H. Carl McCall from Covent Capital. Say, I told you, you know, what's the point in mentioning others? You don't know who that is. Deborah Dingle, do you know who that is? General Motors Foundation. Say, the vice chairman of this, uh, of this um, occasion is Anna Corbinell. Do you know who that is? All right, she's the vice president of station relations for Telemundo. And, I mean, there's just a, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be here. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you know the cocktails start at 6.30. The dinner and awards begin at 7.30. It's black tie. Monday night, the 5th. I'm looking to give you a website or information. It's expensive. There's no denying that. Okay, here we go. Additional information. I'm going to give you a telephone number, okay? The email is too involved. What the hell is this? What does it matter with you people who hit the... Listen to the email. All right, I'll give it to you if that's what you want. NBLCA at (laughs) JFM2Productions.com. Now, do you care? No. Just use the damn telephone. That's what it's there for. 212-921-9070. Extension 13. Oh, that's a bad luck number. Why does that have to be the extension? (laughs) I'll see you Monday. I'll be the one dressed in black tie. Everybody else will be also. All right, let's talk about um, some of this other drama going on in the world. I love the bonus hour. Love it. Rosaria Dawson. All right, I just wanted to ask you if you saw her in Rent yet. And I wanted you to know that if you're a big Rosaria Dawson fan, you know, she's working on another thing. You know, there were 16 films selected for the Sundance um, dramatic competition over at the Sundance Music uh, Movie... What do they call it? Festival. Anyway, one of them stars Rosario Dawson. It's called A Guide to Recognizing Your Saint. Robert Downey Jr. is in it, and Chaz Palminteri, who I think is just so sexy. Chaz Palminteri. Sexy older man. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about this man having sex with a horse. (laughs) How about we talk about something that we're all really interested in? (laughs) Well, I got to tell you, a man pled guilty to trespassing in connection with a fatal horse sex case. His name is James Michael Tate, and he's 54 years old, and he was accused of entering the barn without the owner's permission. He admitted to the officers that he entered a neighboring barn last July with his friend, Kenneth Pinn, to have sex with a horse. Mr. Tate was videotaped because... His friend held the video camera while he had the sex, and then, and then vice versa. <clears throat> In the meantime, Mr. Tate, who's 54, like I said, he entered with his friend Kenneth. Kenneth suffered internal injuries that led to his death. Oh the horse dug, <laughs> it was just, just dug all up in him. Wow. So Mr. Tate was left there, standing there with the cam damn quarter. <laughs> and so Tate was forced, he pled guilty. And was given one year suspended sentence and a three hundred dollar fine in order to perform. What do you want me to say now? <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> On the rest of the horses in the stable. <laughs> no. <laughs> was ordered to perform eight hours of community service and have no contacts with the neighbor in contact with the neighbors. Prosecutor's office says no animal cruelty charges were filed because there was no evidence of injury to the horse. Oh, gosh. Doesn't everything just hurt all up in you right now? 
Uh, do you want to hear about Gregory Peck? I'm going to judge over that. I know I said we talk about Gregory Peck and Donald Trump, and I don't want to. I want to get to um, a recipe for death. A mom, anger, bleach, and macaroni. <laughs> exactly. And then I'm going to tell you this story, and i got to go. I'm going over to the Laugh Factory. A mother has been charged with trying to poison her adult daughter. Mommy, I know you're listening. Listen to how, you know, this is why I love you. We've never tried to do anything like this. What kind of hate do you have for your kids to do something like this? Just what kind of evil, cruel person are you? Or how cruel was the daughter? You know? Just finish with the story, Wendy. I know. And her daughter, uh, poison her daughter and her daughter's family. Wipe all of them out. By allegedly pouring bleach on their macaroni and cheese on Saturday night. Not the Saturday night special. <laughs> no. Nancy O'Donnell, 56, was charged with four counts of aggravated assault and reckless endangerment of another person. Nancy O'Donnell's daughter, Victoria, 24, was preparing dinner around 6.30 on Saturday evening for her live-in boyfriend, Jamal. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, now there's a problem. You see what it that is. <laughs> that explains everything. You got Vicki O'Donnell <laughs> and Jamal Scott. <laughs> Vicky's 24 and Jamal's 30 and they have a 6 year old son and a 2 year old daughter the 4 of them were at home with the mother in, with the with Vicky's mother Nancy the 54 year old Vicky went upstairs while the food was cooking and the police said that when she came back downstairs she smelled bleach in the food wait a minute you turned that car off <laughs> She tried the macaroni and cheese and immediately spit it out after tasting bleach. No one else tasted the food. Vicky then confronted her mother about the alleged tainted attack. According to the court papers, Nancy, the mother, uh, the mother, said that she wanted to sicken her daughter because you don't deserve those children. Oh, see what you were assuming? Sometimes race isn't everything. She wasn't a good mother. Nancy later denied pouring bleach in the pasta. Nancy is being held at the Allegheny. This happened in Pennsylvania. Allegheny County Jail on $25,000 bond. And the court has ordered her to receive mental health evaluation. And that's that story. I love you for listening. Who's going to the Laugh Factory? Raise your hand. I got dibs on the artichoke dip. <laughs> All right. Hey, Pone. Hey, Ken Black. Hey, everybody else. See you there. Doors open up at 8 o'clock. The jokes start at 9. The Laugh Factory, the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience tonight. And then for the rest of you, hopefully I'll, we'll be meeting each other tomorrow at Planet Hollywood. Some, for, some of us for the very first time. Look, me and my whole WBLS family will be over there. The morning show, Steve and Jackie and them will be there in the morning. Jordan will be there for his midday show. And then I'll be there. It might be me by myself. Maybe my band of merry men. I have no idea. But the point is me and the National Enquirer and the fax machine and the telephone, my dots and my water. And we'll all see you at Planet Hollywood tomorrow between 2 and 7 right in Times Square. Come by. Don't forget to bring something for the Hurricane uh, Katrina victims. And we'll talk, God willing. Take care. But Vaughn's next with the quiet storm. Bye bye. <laughs> Wendy Williams broadcast day.